Ready? Ready. Hi, good morning. I'm Christy Brown. Uh, I'm Steve Thompson. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me. Welcome. Um, hope you're going to have some fun today. I know we are. We're going to make some ice cream for you and some ices. And the class is uh, really generated on questions. So please, when you have a question, raise your hand and uh, we'll get to you because whatever you're thinking, everybody else wants to know too. Uh, the reason I was starting off by saying that it was Christy Brown is because uh, Christy just came up with a new idea at our website where you can get an instant quote from us, uh, almost instant. Uh, you just, and you give minimal information. You give us your zip code and your name, your name phone number. And uh, Christy will get back to you uh, in a very short amount of time with a full quote on a machine. You don't have to wait uh, days or anything else like that or other companies. They try to figure out how much money you have before they give you a quote. It's a great system and it works beautifully. The problem is Christie's getting all the sales. <laughs> and, and we are highly competitive because management, oh, that's me, uh, pays uh, $1.92 for every machine sold. And so she's getting all the sales and I'm sitting there twiddling my thumb. So, uh, but just so you know, it's out there and uh, you can uh, get a quote from us without even having to um, you know, call us up on the phone. So what are we making first? Jeff. Jeff. Without having to call you on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, online? Yeah. I don't do that. I, well, <laughs> I know. You're old-fashioned. Well, fashioned. you know, we got to By adapt way, a little bit from 119 uh, years. You just uh, executed an oxymoron. Yeah. Almost instant. Uh-huh. That's pretty good. It doesn't happen. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> I'll use that again. I need to come into the work the next day, in other words, to send you the quote. <laughs> Go ahead. You're in charge for the first one. Okay, then beat it. All right. All right, we'll leave. <laughs> okay, today I thought we would start uh, with a little juice. So we're going to make uh, chocolate Bailey's ice cream. Uh, if you can't have alcohol, you really don't belong here. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it's interesting. Everybody knows Bailey's. Everybody likes Bailey's. And this is a little twist on it, chocolate Bailey's. Okay. Okay. Cool. Is this working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, these are bladders. If you're not uh, familiar with bladders, uh, as the people who took my class are now familiar with bladders, uh, there are 10 quarts of ice cream mix. Uh, I know you hate that word, but it's, uh, this is the lifeblood of our business. This is cream, basically. Good morning, come on oh, in. Oh, no cell phone? Uh, this is uh, basically cream, uh, heavy cream, skim milk, and milk solids, and all that other good stuff. Uh, they come in different percentages of butterfat. Uh, this is 10%. In Florida, 10% is perfect. As you go north in the country, you might want to go a little more. You might want to go to 12, 14, 16, 18, or God forbid, 20, 20, 22. Uh, the, the way that ice cream is made so creamy when we make it homemade is this. Uh, and I don't get any money for this. I should, but I don't. It's because of the churning process. When grandma made ice cream, she used that wooden bucket on the bottom there. You don't have to get it out there. They know. <laughs> And, and we turned it. Remember, we turned it or we turned it, and that was our reward, or the ice cream was our reward. Basically, it was this in the middle, surrounded by ice and rock salt, which kept it cold. And as you turned it, the ice cream solidified on the barrel, and that's what made your ice cream. The machine, uh, it's closed now, but it's the same thing, only it's horizontal instead of vertical. <laughs> and the, the blades in it, uh, there's a cylinder in there right over by Christie there. Those are in the machines. That's where the ice cream is made. And the blades uh, surrounding that in the back of the machine are coils to freeze it. And all this is very simple. All this is is you put this in the machine. If all you did was put this in there, turn it on, 
the compressor will start the coils getting colder and the blades will keep turning counterclockwise and the ice cream as it meets the edge of the cylinder gets cold. The cream gets cold and it solidifies. The blades spinning at today 234 revolutions a minute counterclockwise keep scraping the barrel and brings it back into the middle and eventually the liquid becomes ice cream. So it's the same principle that grandma used and that has been used time immemorium, <laughs> whatever. Oh. And on the first uh, front page of your brochure, the blue one, that is the very first mechanized batch freezer with the patent in 1906, if you wanted to see what Jeff is talking about. On the front cover. Really all you have to know is uh, because of how these blades and machinery are set up, the ice cream is incredibly smooth and rich and thick and creamy. And that's all you have to know. You don't really have to know anything else. So today we're going to make, uh, this is a 24 quart, and we're going to make a half batch uh, because uh, you, don't, you don't want to eat that much. So we'll make a half batch of chocolate Baileys. So a full batch would be 10 quarts. A half batch is, you got it. So we'll start with measuring out five quarts. The, uh, by the way, the class I just had is the first time I've been doing this how long? 12 years? 10 years? About that. This is the first class that didn't spill any of the bladders. They, they all handled it with a plum. I forgot my sippy cup. So we'll take this and uh, tip number one today, when you're measuring stuff, it's usually printed on a measuring cup or this, and people tend to do this to see where it is. If you simply note where you're going and turn it around, then you can fill it easily without turning around or bending down or anything else. So we're going to go with five quarts, which is about that. Make sure the top is on. And also make sure that when you pour it in the machine, what do you have to be sure of? That the door is closed. <laughs> because we've all done it, you've done it, I've done it, and you'll do it. You'll walk over and pour it in, whee! and it comes right on the floor. So just make sure that, focus, focus. All right, so the first thing, we'll, the first thing I usually add to any blend is the ice cream mix. Uh, tip number two, you got tip number one? Mm -hmm. Tip number two, when you're pouring stuff into the machine, the higher you hold this, the easier it is to pour. <laughs> if you try to pour it here, it's going to go all over the place. But if you raise it up, then it creates a narrower flow, and it's easier. <coughs> and there we are. Easy? Easy. That's one thing you'll see, how easy this whole process is. Now we're going to add... Did all of that just go into the cylinder? It went into that, yeah. yes. Just sitting in there. Yes. And these machines, as opposed to anybody else's, these are canted five degrees, so that when you extrude the ice cream, it's faster. And you'll see that. This comes out lightning fast, which is what you want, especially if you have inclusions, nuts, berries, chips, anything else. It'll make a better mix in your final buckets. All right, so we're going to turn it on, and the uh, screen here is a tap screen. Make ice cream, homemade, start. Those are on, right? They're on. Okay. Uh, when we get everything in there, we'll put the compressor on, which will start those coils around the cylinder cooling. So this whole process of making ice cream takes 10 or 12 or 13 minutes. The longer uh, ice creams are because of the increased sugar. The more sugar takes longer to freeze, so the longer, the more sugar you have, the longer the ice cream takes. Because we're using alcohol, uh, there is 
more sugar in there, so it'll take a little longer. If you just put the mix on and turned on the compressor now for vanilla ice cream, it's like eight minutes, so it's, it's no biggie. When you add the alcohol, it takes a little longer. So think of some questions while this is being made, and then we'll talk. No yawning. All right, so we're going to add, this is a quart, and this is Giardelli's ground chocolate powder. It's what I prefer. So we'll add some of that. Uh, speed. These, these, this device is called an infinite overrun control. You can control the speeds almost infinitely, uh, all the way up to 234. Lower speeds you can use for gelato. Gelato is churned slower. Uh, you know what gelato is, right? It's that that uh, stuff they sell in Italy. <laughs> all right. Did that answer your question? Infinite speeds. However, on the panel, uh, well, let's, let's show you. Uh, back. How do you go back? Top left. Back. Top right. Oh, top right. Uh, when you first put stuff in the machine, here's all the different uh, speeds, and they're labeled by the type of ice cream you're going to make. Homemade. Dairy-free, custard, frozen yogurt, gelato, super premium ice cream, and others. So, and those are all at relatively different speeds. We're going to go at full speed, which is homemade. Homemade, start. No problem. That's what we're here for. So we'll add just a little more of this. By the way, when you're buying containers, avoid the clear ones. They're a, a, a more rigid plastic and they crack. Uh, these, the frosted ones, will last literally forever. I mean, I've had the same buckets for 14 years. Not these, these crack, especially the lids. So try to get those. The clear ones get cloudy too. Hmm? The clear ones get cloudy, too. Yeah. Okay, that should do it. About half a quart. And then we'll add the Baileys. Uh, now, I'll say this on YouTube anyway. No need to buy the name brand when you're using liquors because you're adding it to ice cream just make sure that the ones you substitute for the real ones are flavorful and the taste you like. That's the good part. You get to sample all of them and see which one suits you. <laughs> this is my favorite. So we'll add a little of this. <laughs> that was a lot, Jeff. That's a lot? That's a lot for a half batch. <laughs> it may never freeze. Everything's relative. In a full batch, I use two. Oh. Come oh, on, yes. How long does the ice cream mix last? Like once you purchase it. Okay, hang on. Let's turn it on first, then okay. we'll get to your questions. Okay. Now that all your ingredients are in there, the first thing I always do is before I turn it on, as opposed to you, is I taste it because when you're making four, five, six ice creams in a day, if you lose 1% focus, you'll forget something. So two things I do. I try to have all the ingredients for each ice cream in front of me, and I actually count them because I use recipe cards, and I count one, two, three. Like here, we have one, two, three ingredients and I want to make sure that that's what's on the card. And still, I taste it because if you forget anything, this is the time to doctor it a little. If we taste this and I think it needs more <laughs> chocolate, we'll simply add more. If I think it needs more uh, cream, if it's too strong, then we'll just add more cream. So you can play a little bit like that.
Oh, that's great. So now we'll put this on. Whenever right, we put the, the compressor on, what do we do? Wait for it for the water. We wait to hear it and we wait for the water to flow. These are water cooled machines. They have two hoses in the back of the machine. One is water coming into the machine, which cools the motor as like your car, like your radiator in your car. It cools the motor as it's working. The other one is the water that goes in, has to come out, and it comes out here. So when I put this on, I'll do two things. I'll listen for the compressor to kick on, and then I'll look to see that the water is running. So you can hear it from there, listen. You hear the compressor. Then you simply check the water and make sure the water flows. If anything happens, shut the machine and you know you, you, have, you didn't focus. So the water should start coming any day now. Now the same machine is also available in air-cooled. If you have a location like you're in a desert, uh, like Saudi Arabia, or you have water restrictions uh, in your town, uh, you can get air-cooled. Right. Uh, okay, so now everything's happening and we can as, answer your question. Yes, so I was asking about the uh, ice cream mix. How long does it last? Like once you purchase that, how long? When does they that deliver last? it, usually once a week to your store, it's delivered in a case with two bladders, a cardboard box with two bladders in it. Where are they? The the way to to do this is to freeze them, unless you're going to use them right away. And the proper way to freeze them so that you don't have problems is take them out of the case. Put them in your freezer in bladders, paper towel between each one. And then when you go to get it, they'll be rock hard. So how long will they last? Till your grandchildren use them <laughs> in the freezer. Because they get, it's like cement, they get rock hard. During the break, you can check the freezer there. There are some frozen ones and see just how just how so hard they are. It's waking, it's waking up. I'm waking up. You wake up, yeah, Jeff. We have a couple of people here from Dairy Mix. I'm going to ask you to come up for a second. Oh no! Come on up. Oh, Dairy Mix. I've been oh, using no. you for years. It's been a while. <laughs> um, Jeff, why don't you quick tell your story about uh, how someone thought well, come, you were using center, a center, high center, fat mix? Center, Hi, center. welcome. You Good to see you. Dairy Mix is the bladder of dairy that we're using today that we always use for every single seminar and Jeff uses for all of his flavors too. So this is the dairy company that you would purchase bladders from. Now I'm going to get a phone call uh, by this afternoon and it's going to be someone from Nome, Alaska and they're going to say, what's the phone number for Dairy Mix? <laughs> they don't quite go to <laughs> Nome, Alaska yet, yeah, yeah, but they yeah, do yeah. cover a big section of the South mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just a fantastic product. Yeah. Uh, tell them please what uh, are the general ingredients that's in ice cream mix? I mean, general um, condensed skim, milk, uh, raw milk, uh, cream, uh, corn syrup, and sucrose or liquid sugar. Um, that's the 10% you guys have in there right yes. now. So there's whey powder and solids. Um, condensed is also solids too for it. Um, and uh, some uh, flavor, some color. Uh, but that's general 10%. Um, the, the translation is milk, cream, sugar, yeah. and skim milk. That's it. Yeah. That's what's in there. Yeah. And, and the skim milk is the secret ingredient. Uh, so actually, skim milk. Actually, dairy mix, which is why I use them, puts a little vanilla in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, we add, we don't, and we add 10%, more. 10%, yeah. 10% yeah, yeah. It's got vanilla in there. And yeah. that makes a world of difference. Oh, yeah. The skim milk's the secret ingredient because... Uh, if you're drinking heavy cream, what you're drinking is a lot of fat. If you're drinking whole milk, it has less fat, low fat, it's even less milk. When you get down to skim milk, there's either 1% or 0% of fat, but it still has uh, all the good stuff left in it, the solids. So if you are looking to drink the healthiest milk you can, you drink skim milk. If we're trying to make the ice cream even richer and bolder, uh, you won't find it in a good housekeeping recipe. Uh, to put in skim milk powder, but that's that's the little secret ingredient uh, mm -hmm. that's in there. Yeah, um, I we're only doing this every other month, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm freezing my mix. Okay, uh, is there anything wrong with freezing mix? No, there isn't anything wrong with it at all. Um, uh, we do we we code our 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 regular stuff is 
28 day code on it. If you leave it, you know, soft like that, you know, in regular 35, 40 degree temperature, and freeze it, we do have uh, uh, 270 day codes actually. So you can last refresh for 270 days um, or longer too, honestly, really. Yeah. But um, okay, yeah. And most part, yeah, you could you could freeze it. Yeah, it lasts way longer if you freeze it for sure. And people always ask me, they say. Uh, okay, dairy is going to deliver this fresh. It comes in a box, and in the box are two, two and a half gallon bags. And they asked me, how big a refrigerator, and, and we're like every industry, we give, give it a fancy name, we call it a mixed storage box. A mixed storage box is $1,900. A refrigerator is $400. Same thing. But how big a box do I need? So the question then becomes, not how big a box do you need to store all this in, but how often do you deliver? If they deliver uh, once every two weeks, I need a bigger storage box. If they deliver once a week, I only need a box like that. So there's little nuances there that we can help you with, uh, but this is a, a wonderful uh, blend that's available in our part of the South. Uh, we love it. And uh, if you're in uh, Arizona, there'll be a company like them that will have a mix. Uh, if you're in Northern California, they'll have a mix. And again, we call it mix, which sounds awful. It sounds like a powder. Uh, it's, it's really a, a blend. Ice cream mix, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not an ice cream, it's just a mix. People always think, yeah, you make ice cream, like, eh, mix. You can't, you know, you don't have these kind of machines. It's just a big factory that just makes bulk mix. Ice cream mix. I have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have customers who use this for anything else? Um, Usually soft served. Um, I'm not usually a lot of people that make with the, the hard ice cream. It's usually higher fat, like 14 percent or, or, or 16 percent. Usually, um, I don't know if you heard of Sloan's. Uh, they, they, usually, they usually pick Down up 14 Beach. and 16. Yeah, 14 and 16 percent. Yeah, that's us. Awesome. Um, but the 10 percent, we have we do have like a soft serve machine at the plants or tasting room, and we put the 10 percent in it, and it's like perfect. It's like really really good ice cream. Honestly, it's the best. <laughs> the, the other thing you're going to hear about is um, the gelato people, uh, they often buy a powdered mix. Mm -hmm. uh, we have powdered milk uh, in our hurricane closets here in Florida. If the power goes out for five days and you want some milk to put into your uh, coffee, you use a powdered milk. Otherwise, why would you buy powdered milk? Uh, it's, 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 it's not fresh from the cow. And so when the Italians are making gelato, and that's why we in Florida and we in Arizona or we in New York can make a better gelato than the Italians because we're using a fresh blend from a dairy, they're milking their cows on the pampas in Argentina, turning it into a powder, it's called spray drying, shipping it to Bologna, Italy, where they put it in nice foil bags, ship it to the port of Elizabeth, New Jersey, and then ship it to you down here in Florida. It's that stuff's got there. more air miles, fly, you know, flight you miles than I have. Cherry. And um, it's not gonna be nearly as good a product as a fresh blend. Their product, the cow was milked yesterday afternoon at about 4.30. The milk is delivered to the dairy. They, they, they separate it into the different products, re-blend it, and it's delivered to you tomorrow. You can't get any fresher than that. No. So the best ice creams, the best gelatos are made in the United States because we have access to cows, which other countries don't. Sure. We have a great product, and thank yeah, you both thank you guys. for coming yeah, up. Thank you for we're, having we're, us. We're glad you're here. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, quick story. Got time for a quick story? Yeah. Okay. Quick story. Uh, I had an ice cream store, my first store, and uh, I was using, out of ignorance or selection, a company to supply my mix, my dairy mix, and everything was fine. And about five years in or four years in, somebody comes to my door and he's a representative from a company called Dairy Mix, and he said, I'd like to do a blind taste test with your mix. I said, come on in, this is a true story. And he came in and I left the room and he put two cups, uh, two, two of those souffle cups with mix. And he says, okay, try them. And I tasted the first one, because you can drink this stuff. And I tasted it and I said, wow, that's great. That's, that's my mix. 
And he said, I try the next one. So I tried the other one and it was night and day. I was blown away. And that was his mix from his company. I don't, you know, I don't care about the uh, allegiance, but it was so different. And one of the differences was they do put a little vanilla in the mix and it makes a world of difference. And the mix from then on, I was 100% uh, with them through Working Cow, yeah. remember? That was their, and Sunny Florida was yeah. your distributor back then. And that's who I dealt with and still do uh, because the mix is so much better. My point is when you're searching for mix, don't just get one and use it. Try, see what you like better. And it's very simple to see what you like better. Just taste it. Whatever tastes better, it's like Coke and Pepsi. If you like Coke because it's a little sweeter, then try that. Uh, if you don't, then use the other one. It, it's up to you. Uh, I would say it's, I would say it maybe had a 10 to 12% difference in my product, which is significant. You know, that goes in your pocket. Okay. How's it looking? Huh? How's it looking? It's looking thicker, watch. Now, how do you know when it's ready? Well, you can see when it hits the bottom, of, this is how I do it. When it hits the bottom of the bucket, if it maintains the peak, meaning solidity, then it's ready. Steve uses another method of it cutting off in the... I go up, down. Right. And that works well too. If it, it oozes well. out, it's not ready. If it cuts off, and it's good. And there's no exact science to this. Steve, I pull it before Steve does. Uh, uh, clean it up, huh? I, I take it out sooner than Steve does. Steve waits for a little firmer. Yeah. You said something when you were putting the machine together, and I just wanted to uh, uh, ask a question and clarify it. That's uh, it. Hmm? Uh-oh. What? You guys keep talking. I'm busy. Oh, just, you just had to try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These urges come over her. Um, Jeff said, when you get here to the machine and before you pour everything in, you make sure the gate is closed. Well, why on earth would the gate be open? And that the reason the gate would be open is because we just made vanilla ice cream prior to that. And we had the gate open and we got all the ice cream out fast. Now we're putting it in the freezer and now we're going to get the chocolate and pour it in. We left the gate open from the last batch. So when it you pour it in and it goes all over the floor and you're cursing my name, Steve Thompson, because the machine leaks, it's because you left the gate open from the last batch. So you're gonna see Christy and Jeff and I kind of walk past these machines and go like this. You know, we're not patting it hello like one of the golden retrievers that we have. We're double checking that that gate's closed. And it's simply because the last thing we did when Jeff finishes was we left it open. Jeff never does that. <laughs> Any questions so far? Nothing? Okay. Okay, we're almost ready. Let's see what it looks like. Is the anticipation killing you guys as much as it did me? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I couldn't control it. Spoon? What kind of spoon? What? What kind of spoon? How spoon many spoon? you got? What do you want? I want a spoon, that's all. Oh. I'm instead of walking in front of you. Now, um, alcohol never freezes. The freezing point of alcohol is somewhere around 200, minus 237. So no other machines on the market can you pour alcohol into the machine. You have to add it as it's coming out and then that doesn't work very well. Ours, the freezer, is so much refrigeration that we can put the alcohol in. That was a lot of alcohol. Um, and it'll stay in suspension. It'll make the ice cream a little bit softer, uh, but it'll stay in suspension. So look how beautiful that is coming out. And, and look how fast it comes out. Can you stand a little more to the side? That's the second bucket. So the first one just zoomed out. So we're getting uh, all but a little tiny bit of ice cream left out of the machine. You really get a great yield out of it. And it's that quick. You look at other machines on the market and it's slow and it's rippled and everybody goes, oh, well, look how pretty it is. Yeah, but it's, it's wasting time. So that's got alcohol in it. So if anybody can't 
take alcohol at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> hey, but it's Florida, you know, everything And we get more Florida. questions after they have Yeah, this. once they loosen up a little bit. So Christy's gonna give, hand out some portions for you. And instead of asking you, uh, like I used to on these videos, of, isn't that great, isn't that wonderful? We're gonna ask you, what would you do different? Nothing. Is there anything that you would do different? I would add crunch, like chocolate covered espresso beans. Mm -hmm. To go with that. I, I would charge a uh, dollar fifty more for it because it's got the alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. Which and we I would don't, by the way, in the store. Uh, and the reasoning is is pure simple. Uh, it costs us more to make the adult flavors, obviously, but do we charge less for vanilla? No. So it all comes out in the wash. You're still going to make a million dollars in your first two years. So don't worry about it. I charge more because it's special, and I also want a sign up that says adults only. You must be 21 years of age, and we proof. Because we, you, we get some, you get uh, uh, a 16-year-old walking in, and he's uh, six foot four, and he lowers his voice down to, hi, I'd like some of that uh, rum raisin ice cream. <laughs> Let me see your proof. Oh, oh, I left it in the car, and they, and they run off. The mothers, this, uh, ice cream is a family business. Mothers and fathers don't want their children having access to alcohol ice cream. So very simple, you can still sell it. And, and the great thing is the name has changed. For a while there, it was being called uh, alcohol infused. Well, how highbrow is that? That's, that's way beyond me. And then one of my customers called up and said, hey, how do you make boozy ice cream? Well, you say boozy ice cream and you get a big smile on your face like the gentleman over there right away. So it's a great name, it's a nice addition to your store. Uh, and you can charge more for it. Yes? Um, I noticed, what well, I don't think yeah. any sugar went in. So how do you know when to put sugar in? The sugar is already in the blend the from the dairy. Yeah, that's one of the, the parts they put in. Milk, cream, sugar, skim milk, and then they blend it together and then they repasteurize it to, or pasteurize it to kill off any bacteria. So when you get it, it's all ready to go. So are there certain flavors that don't require sugar, or you every just ice cream? Ice cream has, needs sugar. Well, I mean additional. So, like, if we're adding, no, 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 uh, not unless uh, you've got an incredible sweet tooth and you purposely want to make it sweeter. Yeah. Now, by the whether you like it or not, uh, you notice the simplicity of this. There were basically two ingredients. Uh, at the store, when we sell Baileys, we don't add the chocolate. I just thought we would try chocolate Baileys today. But that's a, a very simple process. It's two ingredients. This was three ingredients. It's really simple. So first off, how do you like it? It's really good. And second, Christy said she would add crunch. Anybody have any other ideas that they might do differently? I would have a second helping. Yeah, yeah I would agree to that, too. Excuse me. Yeah, I, and so you could be running a, a buy one, get a second one for the same price. <laughs> right? Yes. That's a, uh, not, a, not quite a BOGO. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm a salesman. I have to sell stuff. So it, it looks like it was unanimous that that's a great flavor. That is good, isn't it? That is good. And easy. Really simple to make. Super easy. Dylan, what did you think? Yeah, it's just like you have a shot. Dude. Have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, you can have, I have yes. another bottle. You can have a shot. Yes. If you forget, <laughs> then you overdo it. Will it like? What, what's going to happen? The machine has sensors in it that tell it that it's getting too thick, and it will shut itself down. Uh, you should not have that problem. Uh, I always tell people when you're going to make ice cream, you say, okay, for the next three hours, I'm going to make ice cream. Don't bother me. So you shouldn't be making ice cream and serving customers at the same time because you're going to get someone like me who wants to talk. And I'm going to talk your head off for 10 minutes and you've forgotten about your ice cream. You come back and your machine is frozen up. If that's the case, uh, you then uh, make sure the switches are off. You open the door and you have to take that stiff, overdone ice cream out. It's still good, you can still sell it, but it's too stiff to come out of the machine. You have to start over 
And then since you open the door, you put everything back in. It's an empty barrel. You have to re-sanitize because your hands were in there. Hold it. And now you're good to Hold restart. It. So the best rule is don't walk away from the machine. We have a timer built into, uh, this is my invention, the infinite overrun control. It's exclusively mine. I invented it 23 years ago. Uh, it has a timer in it that you can look and see what the freezing time is. But I also like to have just an uh, inexpensive kitchen timer. And so if I know my batch, I, I watch my wife Paula bake, and she says, okay, I'm baking a pie or a cake, and it takes 24 minutes. Well, she sets the timer for 22 minutes and then goes and checks the cake and see if it's ready. Oh, no, it's, it's going to be another five minutes. She resets the timer. Set the timer for eight or nine minutes. Some more. The bell goes off nice and loud because you're not just standing there like this like we're doing today. You're getting your next batch of mix ready. You're getting your flavors ready. You're doing stuff. The bell goes off on your $12 timer. Oh, I got to check the machine. And you go back and you check to see uh, if it's ready. So the whole idea of making ice cream is keep it as simple as possible. And when we design these machines and build them for 119 years, the underlying premises make it incredibly rugged and make it incredibly simple. So that, that's what we've done. Yes? Do all of the machines come with the touch screen? Uh, do they all come with the touch screen? All the, uh, from the, the, the countertop box? here up to the 12, 24, 44, they all have the touch screen. This one is the CB200. This doesn't have the touch screen. We designed this for a wide range of products. This will make, it won't make homemade. It will make super premium, mm -hmm. which is a heavier ice cream. It'll make gelato, which is even heavier, and it'll do all the, the water ice products, Italian ice, sorbet. So it'll do a lot of what this one does, but this is the most versatile machine on the market. Uh, other machines, uh, like the Capigianis, are built for gelato. Mm -hmm. They can't do homemade ice cream, and they can't go, and we even go lower than, than they do on that. So the touchscreen is a, is a wonderful invention. Christy, you want to say something? No, I was oh, waiting okay. for you. Was there another question? Yes. Okay, good, good question. I'm going to repeat that. Does uh, I, different ice creams take different times? Yes, vanilla we say about eight minutes. If you're making strawberry, if you eat a strawberry, it's, it's sweet. That means there's sugar in the strawberry. It naturally has sugar. If you're using chocolate chips, they're sweet. Anytime you add more sugar to your formula, the freezing time will be longer. So Italian ice has no dairy in it, or sorbet, or sorbetto. It has no dairy in it, uh, but it's very high in sugar. So where this machine is going to make uh, uh, vanilla ice cream in eight minutes, it's going to take 13 minutes uh, to make uh, Italian ice because of the higher sugar content. So you adjust for that. And uh, you, you, you know that in advance from doing it before that if I'm gonna add something really fruity, like uh, um, what do I make? I make lavender chocolate chip ice cream. And the lavender syrup is really got, it's really sweet. It's got a lot of uh, sugar in there. So that's gonna take longer to freeze than with the vanilla. Should we go on to the uh, next flavor? Yep. Sure. So if you guys aren't awake yet, you will be now. So we're going to do Death by Coffee Gelato. Here's the formula. So just take one and pass it down. Let me get the ingredients here. Everybody likes coffee, right? Especially at this hour. <laughs> uh, we're going to use Death Wish Coffee. That's a cold brew. This is one of Steve's favorite companies, Death Wish Coffee. It's the strongest coffee on earth. So we are doing caffeine, caffeine and then topping it off with more caffeine with espresso morsels. Uh, that is a thing, and they're very yummy. So we are going to start off with three and a half quarts of mix. People always ask me, how come I have such a high energy level? I don't know, maybe it's because of the Death Wish coffee that I eat all the time, drink all the time, and I have it all day long and all day long. It's just really wonderful. <laughs> And unlike Jeff, I uh, don't, you know, sit there and run it for 10 minutes and yak the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we're going to use instant coffee. So the reason why we use instant coffee instead of you know granulated coffee that you would brew is because it's meant to be brewed. Uh, this dissolves very well in any type of ice cream. So whether you want to use caffeinated, decaf, you can use pretty much any brand. I personally at home use Publix brand. Um, it works just as good as Nescafe, although it's Steve's favorite <laughs> in Nescafe. Uh, so we're really going on the caffeine side. Now, how many ounces of the coffee do we need? What's it say? Uh, six, six ounces. Six ounces. So we do that by volume, not by weight. So there's a lot of things that we do by volume and do by weight, and that's your typically your own preference. But when it comes to this, six ounces of this by weight is a whole lot. So that's why we're going to do it by volume. Some of my jokes are over 30 years old. Uh, be careful when you're using the Taster's Choice that you don't get the 30 cent off coupon uh, to go into the machine with it because they stuff it inside the jar. <laughs> <laughs> See, it still works. <laughs> we don't have to fully dissolve the coffee granules at all. We're just going to get it in there, just kind of get it wet and get it inside the mix and the machine's going to do the rest. And make sure your gate's closed. And of course, same rule, don't put it to the throat of the machine. Taster's Choice is a very bitter coffee. I, I'm a coffee snob, that's why I drink Death Wish. But uh, the Taster's Choice is quite bitter, but Christy's got a solution for uh, counteracting that uh, bitter that you'll see in a second. When he means coffee snob, we had a whole meeting once about, don't give me Folgers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we are going to go ahead and hit homemade and start. We're going to go ahead and turn on the freeze button. I know this works because I've already done it. I've already tasted it. Is there any difference in mixing that coffee in there versus pouring it in? It's a granulated thing, so when you pour your mix in, your throat's going to be wet. So when you try to pour the granules in there, it's going to kind of stick to the inside of the throat. So I like to just mix it beforehand so it all goes in there instead of taking a spatula. And Absolutely, no problem at all. Everything is going here. Whole bananas, nuts, cookies, the works. So the opening is very large. Everybody else has an opening like this. So everything's got to be pureed. We take whole bags of chocolate chip cookies and just dump them right in the machine. The beater is strong enough to do it and the opening is large enough. And this is the secret that you know you put in to get away from that bitterness of coffee. It's vanilla extract. It is Steve's fe uh, favorite. Once again, I'm doing all your favorites today. What is up with that? Uh, it's made by Lockhead Vanilla. They make the best vanillas. Their information is also in your packet as well. If you call and ask for Steve's favorite vanilla, they're going to know exactly which one you're looking for, which is the flavor 103A. I'm going to pull a Jeff, not measured, just a splash. That's about it. Jeff does glug glug glugs. I don't. He's not paying for it. <laughs> so. Al contraire. I pay for it, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about adding inclusions is, you know, some people ask, how do I keep my inclusions from going straight to the bottom? Well, I've already turned on my refrigeration. So instead of putting my chips or cookies or whichever you're looking for to put it M&Ms right into the machine soon as you start it, your mix is at a pure liquid form. Even though there is a dasher in there that's gonna be spinning, it's still very liquidy, so your inclusions have a good chance of kind of dropping at that point. You're still gonna to get tons of you know, great flavor, it's still gonna mix well, incorporate beautifully, but for the best um, you know, practice, it'd be wait a couple minutes, let it get a little bit thicker, then add your inclusions, which is what I'm gonna do now. And don't try this with any other batch freezer because they won't go in. They just won't get this past that little opening. All right. That's so everything. That's everything. So we're going to probably take about, you know, 13, 14 minutes for this to freeze fully. Now, your very first batch of the day is going to take a little bit longer to freeze than your other batches after that. 
The reason is, is because your machine was warm, the cylinder was warm, it wasn't very cold. So your first batch will naturally take a little bit longer. So if you're trying to take notes or if you're trying to make you know, formulas for your ice cream makers to tell them how long it's gonna take, use your second batch as your time frame. You know, so your first batch, an example, this will take 13, 14 minutes. If I was to turn around and make this again, I'm probably looking at the 10 minute mark, um, you know, 10 to maybe 12. So that also is a, is a big factor too on your freeze times, like you were saying, different ingredients. Now, uh, if you're working with extreme sugar, as Steve had mentioned before, I just realized I made that in homemade speed and not gelato. <laughs> just clicked. <laughs> you want to turn it down? I can. So that's a good selling point right there. So anyways, you can turn down the IOC and you can make it go way slow. You hear it? It's dropping in speed. So we're going to turn it down or you can also hit stop and then go back to and then put gelato and then hit start again because uh, the RPMs are already set for you. And then of course you have the ability to change your overrun just like I did there. What, uh, go ahead. What makes this such invention is if you're in your dining room and you've got 100 watt bulbs in your dining room and you've got the Thompsons coming over for dinner and you want to lower them down to 40 watts, you're stealing the power from the light bulb. It's no longer 100 watts, it's 40 watts. If you take that same, they call that a rheostat, we call it a light dimmer. You take that same light dimmer and put it on a machine, and now you've got on a bigger one, a three horsepower motor, which is now dimmed down to only about a horse and a half. It's not strong enough to pull through that whole big batch. With my invention, that three horsepower motor, no matter how much you dim it down, it's still a three horsepower motor. And nobody else has that. And that's why this is such an incredibly versatile machine. We can make any frozen dessert that's on the market or ever comes on the market. We'll talk later about uh, my sugar-free Italian ice. Uh, Christy and I have been doing uh, dairy-free vegan ice cream for three and a half years. Uh, all of these were products that hadn't been invented yet, but the machine could already do it. So it's, it's quite uh, unique. So on the gelato setting, and just turning down the IOC that I did for your overrun, so you're not, the overrun is your air content. So 100% overrun is the max by law that you can have. So if you put in, you know, 10, five quarts of mix, you're gonna get 10 quarts of product back out. That's your 100% overrun. So from there, when you slow your speed down because your dasher is not going super fast and incorporating a whole lot of air, we put in three and a half quarts of mix in, we're probably gonna get four and a half, maybe five quarts of product back out. That's why you'll see at a gelato shop being a lot more expensive than a homemade mom and pop ice cream store because they're doubling their product whenever they put it in versus a gelato, they're not getting much back out. It's a very thick, it's a very heavy, and it's a very rich type of ice cream. And it's supposed to be lower in fat, but higher in sugar. <laughs> Any questions? Everybody, oh, there you go. Where do your recipes come from? I come up with them. Uh, some, some are from family recipes, so if you have like a favorite dessert, uh, take that, turn that into an ice cream. All you really have to do is add the dairy mix. Uh, you could pre-make your lemon poppy seed cake, you know, and then freeze it up, cut it up really well, and just shove it in the machine. It's gonna mix very well. Uh, same thing with cookies. Um, this, I just, I know you can make coffee ice cream, let's throw some cold brew in there and the espresso chips, why not? So it's, it's really just coming up with flavors and going in the supermarket and shopping around and looking at something that's interesting and going from there. Also a good place to start, on the easel over there, there are two books uh, for sale. Uh, one is uh, Christie's book, which has, uh, oh, I guess, old Emery Thompson uh, history, oh, okay. Go ahead, continue. No, go ahead. That's, that's exactly what Jeff was talking about, and uh, that's got all Christie's recipes in it. This is just out, and it's got all sorts of stories about Emery Thompson that uh, I have told throughout the years. I got some from my grandfather, some my, from my father and my uncle, and they're all in a hardbound book. Uh, volume two, when it comes out, is going to have even more stories about Emery Thompson, but they're going to be the ones that, you know, we couldn't tell until most everybody in the family was gone because they're a little rockish. But uh, there's great formulas and they're all broken down into uh, the size of the machines. Uh, three quarts, six, 12, 24, 44, it gives you the recipe right there. So you can call here and find out about that. Also, Jeff, 
uh, has a, a book out that uh, uh, you can do an entire store on. Uh, you just take Jeff's recipes. When you watch Jeff um, make ice cream, uh, it would appear to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that and maybe some of that. Well, he condensed down a little bit of this and a little bit of that all into a book and you can uh, contact Jeff at, uh, we'll put up Right the, over there. You have the book here? Yes, of He's course, let me show you. books and stuff. Be right back. Mystic Ice Cream Original Recipes. And uh, with this book, uh, like I said, you can do uh, an entire ice cream uh, store with this. Uh, the, the recipes are perfect. Uh, they're, they're really, really great. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people have been very successful because of Jeff and this book. So between the two books, uh, you can never get enough knowledge. Anytime you can find knowledge. Uh, how about you tell about the knowledge that you got a couple of weeks ago? Uh, Van Lewins up in New York made a special ice cream and you huh. copied it. Yeah, ranch ice cream. Where do you hear that? Everybody one? hear that fad, right? That Jeff, was going around how they uh, made that ranch ice cream. Well, why not? You know, I was kind of curious. Surely ranch ice cream is going to be awful, and it definitely was. Uh, I did make it. I don't know if I have the little pint in there or not. I'll have to look, but you're more than welcome to try it. If you were to uh, stick a bottle of Hidden Valley Ranch dressing in the freezer, that is exactly what it would taste like. <laughs> it was awful. It was absolutely <laughs> awful. And I'm really uh, proud of her for that because I've been known for making just horrendous ice cream. Whoa, 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 whoa. I purposely do it. That's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but it was it, it was so bad, they even had it uh, featured on the Five, uh, on the, uh, the Fox channel. And everybody there tried it, and everybody all agreed it was terrible. <laughs> yes, it, it was. Okay. It made great content. <laughs> but sometimes you do something just for advertising and for fun. Yep. Um, my Sharknado ice cream was that way. And we used little candy corn for the teeth. Shark have lots of teeth. And I made a cherry Italian ice. It was great when we tasted it. It was Halloween, so that's where I came up with the little <laughs> shark's teeth. Two weeks later, I start getting um, uh, uh, letters from Bridget Jones and Smith, or Thompson and Thompson and Thompson, law firms. My client broke his tooth on your ice cream, and we're going to sue you. <laughs> so these things happen. You had a question back then. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're talking about flavors. I went to the museum, uh, the ice cream museum in Chicago, and they had hot dog flavors. Hot dog flavors, yes. And it yes. on it and everything, and I did taste it. I would try that. It, I, I yeah, would do that. It tasted like a hot dog, but like a cold, <laughs> mushy hot dog. <laughs> we have a customer in uh, uh, Texas, and the biggest selling flavor he has in his store, it's Texas, uh, uh, is uh, dill pickle I Italian ice. And Christy made it. It was really good. I actually did that for it. No, no, no. It was that Steve because Steve doesn't like pickles. So you can go uh, to YouTube and type in Emory Thompson dill pickle and the video will pull up. We actually did an audience shot of everybody trying it at all at the same time and it was very good. Uh, but the kicker was is we made, uh, or my husband did, make a strip of bacon. So a half a piece of bacon went into each cup. So you had the pickle Italian ice and you had this, the half a piece of bacon in it. It was the bomb, I'm not gonna lie. It was very good, but I'm a pickle junkie. You're not, so of course you wouldn't like it. It was clever marketing. By the way, Mickey, uh, Mickey Brown is Christie's husband and Mickey Brown is our second engineer here. <laughs> and uh, when we take the tour, you'll meet uh, Mickey today. We're ready, by the way. Okay, and uh, go ahead. Sorry to cut him off. So we're gonna turn off the refrigeration. And so even though you think your product's done and it needs another 30 seconds to a minute, once you turn this off, so I've already turned it off, that compressor's still running. Go ahead and turn it off and let it run for another minute or two because it's still super cold and it's still gonna freeze. Now the compressor has shut off. This is what we were talking about out of a cutoff check. This is what we do. If we open, close, and it just plops clean down, that's when you know you're ready to pull it. But every chef is different, so you don't have to do it the way I do it, don't have to do it the way Jeff does it. You can pull it at your own preference. Now this is on the very, very slow gelato setting, so it's coming out very slow. Let's turn it up. So that's allowing Christy to get it out even faster by turning up the speed after she's made it. Can you hand me that one? Yeah. Christy also found out that if you're running no, at I a mean, higher speed, 
and then you want uh, to fill pints, you just have to tap it slower. You don't have to buy a three thousand uh, dollar separate cover that another company sells. Uh, you just uh, slow down the drive, and now you can fill your pints right at the machine. What could be simpler? Yes. You were saying the uh, smaller machine doesn't make the homemade ice cream; it makes the premium ice cream. So, what's the difference in the homemade versus the premium? Just the texture of it? Okay. The uh, difference between homemade and super premium is just the weight of the ice cream. Um, the texture doesn't really change because that's the machine and the freezing process and the fast, the speed of it. Uh, but uh, the super premium, it's like comparing uh, Breyers to uh, Haagen Dazs. Haagen Dazs is a heavier weight ice cream, and uh, it's got its place. Uh, we, I helped put Haagen Dazs into business. I worked with Reuben Madison, his mother, back in the Bronx. My father worked with Ben and Jerry. Um, but it's the kind of ice cream that you pick at. You bring it home from the store, you take a bite, uh, you have a little more of it at dinner, at 10.30 at night after your wife's gone to bed and has told you to stay away from the ice cream because you're going to get fat, you go and get some more ice cream. So uh, we pick at haagen because it's so heavy. Briars or homemade ice cream, we take a big old scoop and put it right into the bowl. So that was a pretty easy flavor to make too. And you'll notice this one is a, a little bit thicker uh, than what you had with the chocolate Baileys uh, because it was run at a lower overrun. <laughs> Everybody excited to try this one? Yes. <laughs> uh, the people from Dairy Mix, I just got to watch the dynamics of the class today. Oops. Because at this hour, 10 o'clock in the morning, everybody's excited to eat ice cream. So it's like, kids, we're going to get ice cream. By 1.30 in the afternoon, hey, let's make another batch. And then, oh, no, 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 no. No, I can't take any more. <laughs> and it will happen. Well, you know, we, we change it up with cream ice and Italian ice. And, oh, yeah, we do all sorts like of stuff. Dairy-free. Yep. We're going to make Italian ice today. And a uh, cream ice. Yep. Which also has alcohol. We're big on the alcohol today. I don't know why. I guess uh, Easter's coming and we have Friday off, so uh, <laughs> we can recover from the long weekend. Can you just do it the afternoon? Because I don't like Sure. The hardest part about doing this is not licking your fingers. How is that? Oh, good. What do you think? You're not a coffee drinker. <laughs> okay. Now it's. But I wanted to try it. So how's that flavor? Would you do anything different to change this one? Smaller chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. More vanilla. More vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> Could you put like mocha flavoring in? It? You can do that. Mm -hmm. And this is with the ten percent, right? The uh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm. I like that. I dig it. It's very good. Okay. Time to go pack this. I'm going to try to taste that. Okay. Jeff, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. So, my husband took your class back in January. And so, since then, we've been doing a little research while we're waiting on our store to open. And so, we've been scoping out Emory Thompson shops. Like, ice cream shops in the area that have um, Emory Thompson. And here's what I've noticed. Some shops sell super smooth, creamy ice cream, and it's like really enjoyable for me. I know it's not all about me, but I'm just saying, like it's a really good ice cream. Then I go to some other shops that same machine, using same, you know, essentially the same product to make the machine. And the ice cream is not so smooth. Or it's not so. Some of them aren't so sweet, but I know we can't. Where do you live? Here in the area, the Tampa Bay area. We live. Um, we live in uh, Odessa, but so we. But we've been yep. to shops like 
Um, Newport Richie Dade City, Ebor. Like we've been going all throughout the Tampa Bay area, just trying different Emory Thompson specifically. You <laughs> shot. That was the ice cream that you made that he made from my class. He said it was excellent. The smooth creamy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the hand can answer. It's not the machine. The machine doesn't have a brain. That's it what can't, I figured. They so can't like, decide, I'm going to make good ice cream today and bad ice cream tomorrow. But I guess what my question is, is is, is it a dairy mix that they're using, or it, are they not running it long enough? Like, what is their... Yeah, it's not the machine. Even if you don't run it long, even if you, uh, don't run it long enough, uh, it's still going to be smooth and creamy. It's the ingredients they're using. Gotcha. They're probably using cheap ingredients. Jeff taught me a long time ago. He was razzing me for just using uh, sugar off the shelf. Well, there is a big difference between uh, Publix supermarket sugar and pure cane domino sugar. And that's true of all ingredients. You can find uh, a cheaper brand than Taster's Choice for the coffee, but it won't taste the same. It won't work as well. It's all in the ingredients. I mean, you can go out and buy a Wolf or a Blodgett oven, uh, the best on the market, and, and still make lousy dinners. You know, it's 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 uh, it's not the it's not the oven. It's the ingredients. It's always the ingredients, and it's usually that they're trying to economize. And Jeff will tell you, it doesn't matter what it costs you to make the ice cream because you're going to have so many long lines, and you can charge what you need to charge that it's going to come out great. The average price across the country right now is uh, five dollars for six ounces. We took up the normal size of a single scoop from four to six. And uh, the price has gone from uh, it was 220, 225, then it got to 275, 350. Uh, now it's five dollars average across the country, and people are happy to pay for it because it's a treat. It's it's a unique experience. We're going out to get ice cream. It's not the same as bringing home a half gallon of Briars. So it's, it's so to answer your question, it's not the Indians, it's the arrows. Okay. But, uh, so it has nothing to do with like the percentage of dairy mix or anything like that? No. 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 Okay. I'm just curious. I knew it wasn't your machine. I knew it wasn't that. <laughs> well, you've tasted enough different ice creams yeah. that see the And that's why they take my class, so that they can make the world's best ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yes. And buy your book well. with the formulas. <laughs> in. Anybody else? Then we're going to get uh, on to your next flavor. Okay, the next flavor. Old-fashioned cherry vanilla. For some crazy reason, I've been in the business for 14, 15 years, and I never made cherry vanilla ice cream. And the other day, or last week, one of my friends was talking to me, and growing up, okay. cherry vanilla was one of the big three ice creams. Uh, everybody had it, everybody wanted it, and it was good. So we'll make old-fashioned cherry vanilla. Uh, simple ice cream, once again, they're all simple. They're all simple, right? I yeah, mean, simple. in the in the class, Dylan, how many ingredients did we use? Three ingredients, most, you know. Okay, so this one will be a full bladder. We're going to make a full batch of this. Uh, so we'll use one full bladder. So we'll pour this in. My friend George estimated that I've made 65,000 gallons of ice cream. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of ice cream. That's why I'm always on a diet. Let's see, 65,000 gallons and five dollars a scoop. That's why you're driving a Bentley. <laughs> if what you think about is money when you get into the business, you're on the wrong track. <laughs> The money in this business is like a puppy dog. Feed it well, handle it well, it'll always follow you. Very profound. Yeah, did you say you have this cast in stone somewhere? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll add a little vanilla also. And you'll see it's not the only vanilla we're going to add. Because this is labeled old-fashioned cherry vanilla, I thought we would add a little more vanilla flavoring to it. So I have a bottle of Tarani vanilla, which is very good stuff, and we'll throw that in. 
The whole bottle? The whole bottle. <laughs> Now for the cherries. Uh, I bought a gallon of maraschino cherries, and they are here, sans the jar, and uh, they're maraschino cherries. <laughs> Fake color and all. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll give them a slight grind, because we want some small pieces. When you, when you use the Ninja or, or whatever blend you use, and you grind stuff, the goal is that it will touch all the ice cream and you'll get more flavor of that into that. Uh, if I just put these in whole, the cherry flavor would only be when you bit a cherry. So we want to make sure that you have a piece of cherry in everything. Got it? So we'll add a bunch of these in here. We'll take a little cherry syrup. I use Hartley's. <coughs> and then we'll give it a quick mix. That should do. Uh, I'm not going to start it yet because we have one more thing to add after this. So we'll add these in there. And remember, the best mix master in the whole world is not the KitchenAid on your counter. It's this. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have to mix stuff, this does a great job. Pardon my back. Very quiet. We're all hungry. Yeah. I thought the sugar rush would be kicking in by now. Okay. Now we can start it up. And of course, what are we going to do now? Taste it. Taste it. In case we think it needs something. That's old fashioned cherry vanilla. We'll start the compressor and then a little bit when it starts to get thicker in there, we'll add some whole cherries. Because as you know, when you eat ice cream and you come across a whole, ooh, I got a cherry in that one. <laughs> so the compressor just clicked on. The water is coming out. So we're okay to go. Any questions? What does the no? dairy mix cost per case now? What does it cost per case? I'll let you ask him during the break because this video will be on for years and the price has changed. So he'll tell you during the break. How was that? I did that good, right? That was smooth. That was very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you live? Wisconsin. Well, that's the dairy state, of course. There's tons of ice cream places in Wisconsin. As a matter of fact, in my first store, we were so busy that I couldn't keep up. Do we have I was making three to four hundred gallons a week, and I couldn't keep up. So I found a place in Wisconsin, Two, three, and four. I was the first shop they actually delivered to from Wisconsin. It's called the Chocolate Shop. You know their ice cream. Their ice cream is fantastic. And after speaking with them, 
uh, they agreed that I would open up this area for them in the south. Uh, but they're great ice cream. So are you the home shop? Yes. Yeah. It was, I sold it. It's very good. It's very good. Famous. And you know, the class ice cream, they'll make the same ice cream. These guys are from Honolulu. They came to the class. And when they go back and open up, they'll make the same great ice cream, and it'll be better than everyone else in the area. A uh, quick show of hands. How many of you are going into the Italian ice business? Okay, one. How about uh, ice cream? Okay, so it's mostly an ice cream crowd today. Um, back when uh, uh, COVID first hit in February of 2020, and they were shutting down uh, all businesses all over the country, um, I wrote a few articles uh, to try to save uh, my uh, over 39,000 customers worldwide, keep them open. <clears throat> they couldn't have the store open, but they could still run stuff out to your car. So social media took over and uh, police, people are placing their orders. And what I got them into was pint sales. Pint sales have always been around, but they were ignored. Um, what we had people doing was the store owner could go into his own store and we would uh, pre-fill uh, pints at the machine and then we would put them in a freezer. Once you fill that pint and you do the best you can of uh, filling it, you put the cap on it and then a little old timer secret, and I qualify as an old timer, you turn it upside down in the freezer. So it freezes with the product falling to the bottom. So when the customer opens up the container, you've opened up a, uh, a container of uh, ice cream and it's perfectly smooth to the top. That's because even the biggest companies in the world turn their pints upside down. Uh, pints are sold by weight, so if we happen to miss scoop, uh, we've got it factored in there that if there's a little air bubble in here, as they scoop into it, that disappears. But you turn your pints upside down. So here's what happened with pints. Uh, people wanted to get out. They wanted to get out of, the out of the house. They were desperate to get out of the house as the COVID was uh, raging. And so they would uh, text in an order to your ice cream parlor and uh, order up uh, some pints and then come out uh, to your car, hand you the pints, and off you drove. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. You'd get the whole, people, the whole family in the car, just like we do to go out to an ice cream parlor, except we were just going out to sit in the parking lot. And uh, it has uh, evolved uh, into, uh, when I do an ice cream parlor, I always have this section over here, the person is standing here, what would you like? I'd like a mint chip. What would you like? I'd like a cherry vanilla. Uh, also, over here, we have another table, and all it says is a little sign that says, take out pints. And, uh, and right next to it is either a chest freezer uh, like this one back here that they can reach in and grab their pint or maybe it's a vertical like a true freezer cabinet where they can see the different pints. Uh, Culver's Custard uses that that version. And the, the point is <clears throat> Paul and my wife, our office manager, has called me up and said, hey the Thompsons are coming for dinner. Make sure you stop at Thompson's Old Fashioned Ice Cream and pick up a couple of pints of ice cream. Well I've got two golden retrievers and it's 90 degrees out. I can't go to the public supermarket because I can't leave the dogs in the car. I can't leave the dogs in the car with the air conditioning running because someone will steal the car and the dogs. But I can come up to your place because I know you have just a little takeout stand that, that just says take out pints. And here's, so I can run in, engine running, dogs in the car. I know I'm gonna be out in 40 seconds. How do I know that? Because there's nobody standing over here. There's no one here to serve me. The server over here sees me come in and I grab my two pints <clears throat> and the server says, excuse me a minute, I'll be right with you. Uh, yes, can I help you? Yeah, I want these two pints. Fine, do you want a bag? No. Uh, 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 do you, uh, you want, we'll pay by credit card, slide your card. I slide my card, I've got my two pints and I run back to the car. I have frozen these pints down to 10, below in a chest freezer, 25 below zero in our hardening cabinet. And so I know they're gonna make it all the way home 
without melting. So I was able to run in, grab my two pints, and get back out to the car to Sammy and Stella, the Golden Retrievers, in 40 seconds. And as a man, my job is done. You know, if I have to go to Publix, I'm the one who's going to get behind the little old lady who's counting out 97 cents in change from her pocket purse. And you're going to be there for 10 minutes. Now, what about over here? Uh, if it was 10 years ago or five years ago or just before the COVID, the person in line would say, hey, that guy got in front of me. That's not fair. Nowadays, the person who here who got interrupted says, wow, did you see that? Look, he's got two Goldens on, in his SUV on the parking lot. He ran in, paid for him. Was, he was gone in 40 seconds. I could do that next Tuesday when the Thompsons are coming over to play bridge. So this person isn't angry anymore. They've just discovered you've got pints for sale. That's great. So this is a huge business. You'll always buy two pints. I can't come home with a pint of mint chip, my favorite flavor, and say, hey, Paula, look what I bought for me. And she's going, where's my coconuts? <laughs> oh, OK, yeah. So I don't care what it costs. We're getting eight, nine, ten dollars a pint. And I'm always going to buy two because I want uh, one for me and uh, a flavor for Paula. So uh, there's a $20 sale right now, and nobody ever blinks. Uh, you know, you, once in a while you hear someone complain that an ice cream cone costs $5, but they'll never complain about the pints. And then those of you who are of the, uh, uh, or if, if you're not uh, like me, um, this pint never gets home without being open. And uh, just so you know, ladies, this is what your husband is doing. As we're driving home, it may be rock solid, but it can't stand up to tea. So we're opening it up, we're taking a bite or two out, out of the pint of ice cream. And then the second we get home, because we're not really as stupid as we look, as soon as we get home, we grab a spoon and we smooth it over where it was. We're still not as stupid as you think because now there's an indent. So with that spoon, with our wife watching from across the kitchen, we gouge into it and take a big bite out of it. Hey, don't eat that, that's for the Thompsons when they come for dinner. So we've had ice cream on the way home without a spoon. We've uh, smoothed over the, uh, the, uh, the evidence and nobody knows the difference except now I'm sorry, but your wife does know. But pint sales are literally through the roof. I've got uh, people calling up who are doing only pint sales out of a, a very small store. Still good? Timing-wise? I don't know. Not me. <laughs> no, I mean timing-wise. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm doing differently is I used to do stores do that, that were 1,700, 2,000 square feet. We had big seating areas. We had 40 flavors. Um, people would come in and hang out. Uh, the rents have gotten too expensive for that, number one. Uh, a large part of my market is uh, customers under 40 years old, and quite frankly, they don't have the credit line of credit that someone in their 50s or 60s might have developed over the years. So they're on a tight budget, and so we're on a tight budget. I sell them uh, the CB350. I advise them to go to Home Depot and buy a couple of chest freezers. And, and look for a 750, 900 square foot store. As one lady said, do you know the difference, Steve, between 2,000 square feet and 750 square feet? And the answer she said was, a whole lot of mopping. So if you don't have to mop 2,000 square feet of store, you only have 750, it's a lot easier. 750, no matter what the rent is, it's gonna be a lot less than 2,000. So uh, we only do about 12 flavors, <coughs> 10 of uh, ice cream and two of, uh, vegan dairy free, maybe I'll add Italian ice later on, or the opposite, I do Italian ices and add ice cream later. Uh, but I'm doing it in a very tight store, we're not doing toppings, we're not doing milkshakes, we're not doing banana splits, just the 12 flavors, usually into a cup, because it's, uh, it's more, it's six ounces instead of four. And you're doing a huge business with a low overhead, and we can do it for under $50,000. Uh, pretty well under fifty thousand dollars so that's that's the future of ice cream parlors and with social media without social media we had to be the best location the best parking on the best street in the best town now with social media my wife and I <clears throat> when we go out to dinner we don't go to some fancy name place we also don't go to McDonald's we're looking for nice fresh food 
And someone on social media uh, said, oh, here's this little place. It's only got 25 tables, but the chef changes the menu uh, every week. Well, that's, that's a great place for us. Uh, so uh, we are going to a place like that. And people, if you have a small ice cream parlor and it's down that alley and turn left and ask for Frankie, uh, we'll do it. And so that has really opened up the ability to get into the frozen dessert business. All yours. All Jeff. All Jeff. Okay, we're almost ready. Good. But not quite. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of sugar in this one, so it takes longer. If anybody would like to see the inside of the, the white book, not Jeff's, but the Emory Thompson recipe book, you can go see uh, Kendall in the front office and she'll let you finger through it and just kind of take a peek at it uh, if you want to do that before you purchased it. And how much is it? It's 75 uh, and then Jeff's is? Uh, 40 today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you can buy two of Jeff's and, and, uh, and uh, get one to a friend. Them, they're 60. Most of the time in this class, they're 50. But I only brought four with me, so they're 40. <laughs> Come on, some questions? Anybody? When you make the pints for your store, if you pre-make them and have them in a freezer, do you have to have them? Like, they have to be labeled, right? Do they have to be labeled with the ingredients that are on them? If you sell over a certain amount, you have to put the ingredients list on it. Okay, is there anything else? You don't have to have like a special license to sell them? No, because it's a retail sale. You walk in and you buy an ice cream cone, we don't come with labeling sure. on it. So if you buy a pint, it doesn't have to come with it. If you decide to branch out, which I think you should, and supply your pints to a, a local deli or a local bodega, uh, and you send them, you deliver them 16, 20 pints a day, I mean a week, uh, and they're selling it, making a profit too then you need some additional labeling. You need a wholesale license because you delivered it. And that's easy. You already have a retail license. The wholesale is just clicking off a few more boxes. And I would, if it has anything to do with nuts of any kind, not just peanuts, but tree nuts even, uh, I would be sure to at least put that on there. Or if you think there's a possibility, you could put, you know, cross-contamination possible, however you want to word it, you know, because it's it, tree nuts are a common thing, you know, like my daughter has an allergy to walnuts. We have a lady here who is a, has an allergy to pistachios. So, I mean, it can vary from, from person to person. We're a very litigious society, you know, we'll, we'll sue for anything. So another yeah. way to look at it is you have so many different varieties of ice cream, dairy-free Italian ices that don't have nuts in it. Maybe you just run your whole business without any nuts in it at all and then you can advertise that uh, this is made in a, a nut-free factory. That might be a safer way to go. I love peanut butter ice cream, but I don't want to risk nowadays uh, giving peanut butter to a child who might go into anaphylactic shock. I you know, just, just don't want to see it happen. Just maybe leave it off the menu. Stick to fruit flavors and cookies. There's a lot you can do with cookies. They're great. Ready? Oh, if you are. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering. Speak up a little. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering, how would you like, you know, like for like filling pints and stuff, is there anything you like you normally do for like filling them really easy without like spilling and doing all that? Or? Uh, He's ready, so save Jeff's going to go ahead with his and then no, we'll ahead. talk about you it. You can answer. Oh, okay. Well, like I said, I fill it at the machine. All I do is use my infinite overrun control to slow it down and fill it. Um, it can be a little bit messy, you're right. So you fill about 10 or 15 of them, put them on top of the machine, and then when you're finished, you go back with a clean cloth and wipe it and put the lid on it, turn them upside down. Uh, TD Sawville, otherwise known as Sawville, S-A-W-V-E-L, automation, also makes a great machine where you make, you've got a bigger Emory Thompson, you pour the ice cream into the Sawville funnel, and then you have a, a, a foot pedal, which is a little piston pump, a little electric motor. And you put a cup under, boom, fills it perfectly. Fill another one, fill another one. That's about $8,000, $7,000, And you'll get to that point later when you're just doing so many pints. So you can see this is a beautiful color that Jeff has here. 
I'm looking forward to this. See how fast that comes out of the machine? That's what we're trying to do. We're all about speed and efficiency. I don't want to stand here for five minutes trying to get the ice cream out of the machine. Oi. Oi? Yeah, see, licking the fingers would be so easy right now. Oh, that's good, Jeff. You like that? Oh, that's delicious. You'd say that anyway. No, I wouldn't. I, I didn't say it about the ranch dressing, the Hidden Valley Ranch <laughs> dressing ice cream. We didn't say about it, uh, what was it, saffron ice cream. <laughs> One other quick little trick. Um, let's say this table over here is your dipping cabinet. Uh, that dipping cabinet is wrapped in refrigeration lines all the way around. So if uh, one little trick, you, you can go in an ice cream parlor and if you see the server struggling with one ice cream and easy to scoop the other, they don't know this trick. That box is all refrigeration all the way around but the four corners, one, two, three, four, those four corners get more refrigeration onto this tub over here in the corner. It's being hit by two sides of refrigeration. Over here, it's only being hit by one side of refrigeration. So if this was my store, my vanilla would be here, and I've got it set for six degrees Fahrenheit. This product, with all the extra sugar that he poured in in the form of the syrup, I'm gonna put in the corner where it's gonna get more refrigeration. The overall box is six degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not even. Warmer, it's six here, and colder over here. Um, so that's, that's a good trick to know. So alcohol on the outside? Alcohol on the outside, absolutely, because it's gonna, and that way everything scoops uh, evenly, and you're not struggling with it. Sounds perfect. Yeah, if they're struggling with it, they don't know that trick. Jeff and I disagree on a lot of things. Uh, Christy was telling me this morning that's why people tune in. They like to see us, you know, what would you call us? Jack Lemon and Walter Mathall. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that may be true over the years. Um, Jeff says what you taste is what you get. Uh, I know for an absolute fact, because I, I deal in facts, that if you have this same ice cream tomorrow after it's been through the hardening phase and the hardener, good. the flavor will come out even stronger. It blooms. It, if you taste my vanilla straight out of the machine, you go, ah, it's good, he didn't put enough in. Taste it tomorrow, it'll be stronger. Jeff says no. Want my reasoning? Yes. Okay, he's wrong 100%, and that's a fact. Because, just let's take this to the extreme. Suppose you had a popsicle, a cherry popsicle, an ice cherry popsicle, and you take it out of the freezer and eat it. Will you get more cherry flavor then, or when it's first made and it's soft? Okay, it doesn't apply to Italian ices. There's no dairy. It's dairy that blooms. It's not When uh, you sugar were young water. and you got a bowl of ice cream and you took your spoon, didn't you go around the edges where it was softer because it was creamier and more flavorful? I have a picture of you when you were two, and I saw you take that ice cream and smear it up against your face. <laughs> You know why babies do that? Because when they're born, they're going to be nursing, uh, most likely. And all the receptors around here are all very heightened. That's why small children take uh, food and smear it up against their face. As they get older, these sensors calm down. So when you see a baby, I mean, there's no such thing as a baby picture without eating ice cream that where it isn't all smeared all over. And that's why. I'm going to the middle of these two. And I'm just going to jump in here. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there is some things that you do have to let bloom overnight and it does alter and change the flavor. An example, when you work with a stand from Green Mountain Flavoring, he has um, some formulas that you do have to make in advance, let it sit overnight before you have the optimum flavor. So yes and no. Um, I can tell you that lavender chocolate chip doesn't taste the same as it does the next day. I prefer it fresh versus the next day because it is stronger when it first comes out to me. Uh, Steve obviously thinks differently. Um, and then of course I am with Jeff. Vanilla is vanilla whether it comes out of the machine now or you have it set tomorrow. Uh, chocolate chip's going to taste like chocolate chip today and it's going to taste like chocolate chip tomorrow. So I'm in the middle of both of them. So Jack Lemon and Walter Math, all oh, there you go. Do your own taste <laughs> test and then let me know. Uh, let me know, uh, Steve at emerythompson.com. Uh, yes, which reminds me, uh, Christy and I do something called Questions Answered every Wednesday. It's 10 minutes long. Uh, she has three questions that people have asked. Uh, I have three, and we get it done very quickly. We ask you, send in your questions uh, because people like to hear what other people are doing, and we'll answer those questions every, uh, every Wednesday when we sit up here and, and do that. We're going to take a 10 minute break while we reset. If you want to get up and walk around, um, there's bathrooms right here, there's water over there, uh, we have coffee here. Uh, help yourself, stretch your legs, and then we'll come back and have more fun. Thank you. Oh. Paul, uh, Christy is now going to make a, a boozy cream ice. And she'll tell you all about it. I'm going to pass out the recipe for you. So, a lot of, like Steve has said before, I, don't, I think he's kind of touched on it. People called it alcohol infused. Um, I'm a big alcohol fan, not an alcoholic alcohol fan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I like working with a lot of alcohol things, uh, especially when it goes into ice creams or ices. I, I'm more of a fan on the ices part than I am on the ice cream. Um, great sellers, especially if you do like events and things like that, you know, you've got something extra on the side that you can have and make a couple extra more dollars for. I know that's against what Jeff says, but I'm with Steve on that. Definitely charge a little more if you're going to have anything that has alcohol content in it. Um, you could even take your very favorite drink uh, and turn it into a Italian ice, uh, a boozy ice. You know, if you like mint juleps, you can make a mint julep Italian ice. If you like margaritas, make a margarita Italian ice. Typically, when you do make Italian ices or a cream ice, you use all natural ingredients, uh, which is, well, I wouldn't say vodka's all natural, but <laughs> you It comes from potatoes. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and you want to try to stick with fresh as, as much as you can. Now... I'm gonna sidestep over here real quick. Grab these two things. Sometimes you do need to use a base. And when you work with bases, it's best to kind of use those that need help. Uh, mangoes are kind of bland on their own. Uh, mango is the number one Italian ice seller. You can do real fresh mangoes or frozen mangoes, let them thaw with the mango base. Uh, margarita, obviously, you know, you could buy the mix. I haven't tried that yet um, and throw it in the machine. But they have a margarita base that you can use, throw in some tequila, throw in some water and sugar, and you are good to go. Um, other than that, if you can make it with just real ingredients that you can just buy off of the shelf, whether it's blueberries or strawberries or grapes or whichever, always do that if you can. Let's put this back. Any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we are going to do, I think it's a quart and a half of water, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use regular cold tap water. We don't need filtered. We don't need bottled, jugged, fancy. It actually doesn't do clear water. It says dairy mix. Oh, that's right. We're using cream, uh, ice. cream ice. That's right. Italian ice you is need yours. The mix? No, I got some in here. So I'm going to eyeball it in this. This should be exactly enough. I'm used to making Italian ice, not cream ice. Now, cream ice in the past was called sherbet. Uh, but sherbet usually only came in raspberry, uh, or there wasn't much more than raspberry growing up when I was doing it. Um, but now it's evolved into uh, a cream ice. It's an Italian ice with the addition of some of the uh, dairy blend from the dairy. Uh, which gives it a nice smooth taste, but it's still icy and not icy, but refreshing <laughs> like an Italian ice. 
So I have made an orange Italian ice and I just use straight orange juice. I had no water, no nothing, just orange juice and sugar. I mean, it's diabetes in a cup, but it's very, very, very good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's high in sugar content, but it makes the best Italian ice. Um, I used these before. These are, I think Steve called them mini coffins. And I have taken these to the beach. I have made my Italian ice. I have put it in here. A boozy ice, whichever you want to put in here, and I just put it, close the lid, put it in my cooler with a couple of hard ice packs with the rest of my drinks and food, and about six hours later in the Florida heat, it was still beautiful Italian ice to scoop. This would be great if you wanted to sell something for, you know, beach trips, if you're in a very, very touristy, you know, area where they want to take stuff on the lake with them, on the boat, or go to the beach, or things like that. Or even just those that want to take ice cream, their favorite ice cream, to their mom and dad that live a couple hours away. This will definitely make the trip. You can get these from uh, Gelato Supply. And then if you use the name Emery Thompson, no spaces, just all one word, you can get a 10% discount as well. That's gelatosupply.com. Uh, they also have the inserts that we're using um, for gelato. Instead of gelato pans, they have an insert that you can use, and you can use them over and over until they break. All right, and we're going to add a quart and a half of this. So that's going to equal out to three quarts. Oh, why not? Okay. Getting like Jeff. I know, I know, I know. I always say Jeff is the Emerald Lagasse of uh, ice cream making because you know how you know Emerald is? He's like, a little more, a little more. <laughs> he keeps going. So we're going to, I already have my pound and a half of sugar measured out. We're going to put it in here. Now, you don't have to put the sugar in here first and then pre-mix it, but there's a reason why it's best if you do. Sugar acts like sandpaper. And when you put it into the machine, just dry, straight, granulated sugar, it's fine. You're not going to ruin your machine. You're not going to ruin your blades. But over time, if you continuously do that, especially for Italian ice makers, you're going to wear the longevity of your blades down a lot faster than if you were to kind of give it a little pre-mix beforehand. Um, so that way, instead of replacing your blades every five, seven, or every five to seven years, you would have to replace them probably every three to five if you just poured the sugar straight in. That's good enough. We'll let the machine do the rest. And then a cup of vodka, right? Ooh, this is very cloudy. All right. Smells good. We found that if you use too much alcohol, you take a taste of the product and you just go <gasps> like that, it, it, it just overwhelms the flavor. Christy, so what are you gonna do with the rest of that? That's, that's after hours. Yeah. That's after they you leave at two o'clock. <laughs> Uh, so you'll notice how I put a cup. Jeff put an entire bottle. And the reason why is the alcohol proofs are different. So the lower the proof, the more you can put in. It's a liqueur. The Bailey's or the St. Brennan's is a liqueur, whether you're using a, you know, an orange liqueur or if you're using amaretto. Um, but if, when you're working with vodkas, that's quite potent and high proof. So you kind of want to stay back a little bit. Yes, ma'am. So I wanted to take this recipe and not put alcohol in it. Is there something else that I would change the amount of? No, well, just leave out the vodka. Okay. That's it. If you wanted to make it like a kind of on the coconut side, you could throw a can of cream of coconut, coconut orange cream ice. That actually sounds pretty good. All right, so my gate's closed, and here we go. Steve, when did you stop working? I didn't stop working. You used to be, uh, you know, making stuff and everything. These are Christie's formulas, so I let her do it. She does a great job. I work 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Any? That's called marriage. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, that's that's a side side benefit. Oh, we're gonna start that. If Christie, this recipe makes how much? So it's a water-based product, though it's not. What is my problem today? It has dairy in it, so there's gonna be a little bit of expansion, not as much as you would anticipate with normal ice cream. So you're probably looking around maybe 30% overrun because it's half dairy, half juice. Uh, so I put in about four quarts, so you're probably gonna get about five and a half, <coughs> maybe six, six quarts back out. It'll be on the little bit fluffier side, you know, and that orange juice in there is gonna kind of be um, like a sherbet. Everybody's had sherbet, right? Okay. Any other questions with working with alcohol, working with juices? 
No? Okay. So sometimes people ask, can I use just straight juice? Yes, you can, but it depends on your juice. Uh, orange juice, you can use straight from the bottle. You don't need to mix any water with it. Uh, I have tried the Simply Lemonade. It's very diluted, and I wouldn't recommend using that. If you go to the refrigerated section at the supermarket where all your juices are, you'll see like pineapple orange or pineapple mango juice by Tropicana. Definitely can just use those straight from the bottle. Don't need to mix any water with it. Just juice and sugar and fruit if you want to do that. Um, you know, some other things like we talked about you want to use bases for. You still have to use sugar. Still always have to use sugar. I cut back on the sugar on this because the orange juice has a lot of sugar in it as it is, plus the alcohol content. I don't want it to take 20 minutes to freeze. I don't want it to be soupy when it comes out, and I want it to have a nice scooping temperature or scooping to it whenever I put it into my dipping cabinet. So when you have alcohol-based products in your dipping cabinet, so you have your mango Italian ice, and now you've got your very berry wine sorbet in the same cabinet. You're going to notice your wine sorbet is going to start to melt a little bit faster than your mango ice. The reason is because the alcohol content. So it would always be ideal if you could have like another little separate cabinet just for that or keep it in the coldest part so that way it doesn't start to separate between your other Italian ices. One question that's always going to come up is, do I need a liquor license to do this? And the answer is no. Uh, the reason you don't, uh, just take a look at bakeries. They have uh, baba rums, they have rum cake, they have all these different products and they do not have a liquor license because it's considered an ingredient. Uh, most every state in the union, uh, my own New York state actually has one of the most liberal uh, amounts of alcohol content you can put in. They all have a upper limit of what you can uh, use, and it'll be in wording like uh, you can use 0.25% by volume. Well, if you can figure out what that means, then you make sure that you always use uh, no more than 2.4% by volume. So that if they come and inspect and they say, what's your volume of alcohol? Uh, you're not doing it in ounces, you're doing it in uh, per volume of overall product. Because the ounces obviously in this machine are gonna be less than the ounces in that one. But that's your answer is no, you don't need a liquor license. Uh, unless you start making mixed drinks, milkshakes, uh, that could possibly cause a problem but it's also the volume, as I was saying before. If you put too much alcohol in there, it just catches in your throat. You don't taste the product that you're making, you only taste the alcohol. We once had a guy bring in uh, uh, um, a bourbon that he made at a still in Kentucky, and uh, it, it was above 150 proof grain alcohol. I mean, it was so strong that uh, uh, in 10 below freezing, it still scooped like soft ice cream. Uh, it was so strong. And it wasn't delicious because the alcohol overwhelmed the product. Just like the bakery, it's an ingredient. It's not the main feature. Any particular questions? I have one point I was going to make and I forgot it. Yeah, or, uh, Steve, what do you, why do you include that second little thing inside when you're pouring in? What's that little grape looking thing? Um, it's a, UL, it's a UL requirement. It's an, it's an underwriter's laboratory's necessity. Uh, you have, uh, we are, uh, under, underwriter's laboratories and National Sanitation Foundation are two U.S. testing services, the most rigid, stringent, stringent in the world. They are not government agencies. But the federal government gets into play that uh, on equipment like this, they want a uh, dust cover uh, to uh, protect the product. So uh, we are meeting the NSF standard up here by having this fall down. Now you can't put your fingers into the machine and the cover uh, is for dust. And the interesting thing is that uh, in the operation of this machine uh, we meet both codes because every time you close the outer cover you're automatically closing the security cover. So that's why we have both. Uh, yes, and we have guards on the machine. Uh, the, all the Italian machines, the Japanese machines, they're all the same design. They're all, their doors look the same. And they have these bars that block the ice cream because their engineers aren't as creative uh, as our, engineer, our engineers are. Uh, their, 
flat up against the machine, they're saying the way to keep your fingers to going in is put bars. Well, the bars slow down the product coming out. They block the way. I wrote an article called the tater tot theorem. You put a bunch of tater tots into the oven, and when they're ready, if you pull out the first four, great. The next four, they're getting more crispy. The third floor, they're getting four, they're getting burned. And the last group, your house is on fire. So we want to get the product out fast. So instead of the traditional guards, we've been doing this forever, where we design guards that project out beyond the machine so the ice cream comes out and falls, does not get in the way of the discharge. We can still jar discharge very quickly, but you can't get your fingers up there. So we solved the problem of safety uh, and the desire to uh, keep that product consistent from front to back by getting it out quickly. When I do the pints, the way I can get away with it is, and that was Christy's idea. She came along and said, why don't we just slow down the drive? And we're all going, duh, you know, why didn't we think of that? If you slow down the drive, you're, putting, you're not putting any more air in the product. And you also want to be able to fill it, close it, put it up here, fill it, close it, put it up here. So we get both jobs done. We keep the product consistent throughout the batch when we're filling pints, and uh, we're not adding more air. So you know how some of, has, has everybody had Italian ice before? Yeah. Yes. So have you ever had an Italian ice that was so creamy and so good and you've had some that were kind of on the granulated side, watery? There's, there's a reason. So it's the secret. More sugar. So the more sugar you add, the softer and creamier it's going to be, kind of like a Philly ice. Uh, so this has a lot of sugar because of the orange juice. So typically the rule of thumb is with the CB350, four quarts of liquid with two pounds of sugar. Uh, but I cut back a half a pound because of the orange juice and then the vodka. So it'll still be nice and creamy. There we go, that sounds better. <laughs> Might be getting a little... Oop, still soupy. So when you want to make a creamier product, if you have your two pounds of sugar, you can add another half a pound. I always do it by half a pound increments. Now there are some flavors like this one where you need to cut back your sugar. There are some where you'll just need to up it regardless. Uh, strawberry Italian ice, if you're working with strawberries, strawberries are very high in sugar naturally. So you can stick with your two pounds so it'll scoop and be nice and creamy on its own. If you're working with you know, mango, you'll need to up your sugar because of the base and then plus your mangoes don't have naturally as much sugar as strawberries. So you'll learn the difference. Pineapples, they're pretty high in acid and they're pretty sweet. Um, I've normally stuck with the two pounds of sugar whenever I work with pineapples because I've done a, uh, like a Malibu coconut where I've done crushed pineapple and dairy mix and some cream of coconut and vodka. <laughs> Always got to have the vodka in there. Um, so, you know, high sugar content, so you can kind of keep your two pounds of sugar. Any other questions? Did no. you mention about adding an extract to a bland flavor? Yeah, we talked about the, okay. the bases. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's a lot of points. You guys are too quiet. It's all the booze we put in them. I know. Well, they're <laughs> they're, they're burning now <laughs> from the alcohol, then the coffee. <laughs> oh, looks so good. I love setting people up. We're gonna do an. Uh, I'm gonna do an Italian ice after lunch. And I love setting people up into the Italian ice business because your two main ingredients, your biggest, highest cost factor is tap water and sugar from the supermarket. Uh, and then the third ingredient is flavor. I mean, it doesn't get any cheaper. On a hot day, uh, ice cream is going to make you thirsty because of the fat content in it. It can even, if the fat gets too high, it even makes you sweat. Um, that's why we mentioned earlier on this morning uh, then we, when we buy from Dairy Mix, we're ordering, they have higher fat contents, but we order 10%, which is the federal minimum, because we're in Florida. And at noon, when it's 90 degrees out and 100% humidity, and you're eating haagen you're going to just sweat or drop dead in the parking lot, and that's not good for business. So uh, we use a lower fat content product to make it more refreshing. Well, the Italian ices are the most refreshing at all. They're like having a Gatorade dumped over your head, you know, at a football game. Sugar, water, and flavor. Uh, the sugar goes right into your system. The water is hydrating you. I mean, it's, it's besides beer, it's the most perfect food. And um, it, it's so inexpensive to make. It takes less equipment. Uh, you just need a batch freezer, a sink, and a freezer. Uh, and, uh, and you're in business. Uh, with ice cream, we need to store 
the, um, uh, the dairy mix when it comes in. Uh, we probably need a hardening cabinet. We need dipping cabinets. Uh, so I like to start people off in ices in season and then in the fall uh, start graduating them into something very similar to ices which is going to attract the 40 and under age and that's the dairy free vegan uh, which is made from a, a powder and it's either a coconut base or an oat base. These are the two that I found that uh, are the best two to use for dairy free. And uh, that works right. And then in the winter time you can start adding ice cream. So we're going to be with you the whole process. We give lifetime technical support even if you don't buy a machine. If you just call up today and say hi uh, you now have life, free lifetime technical support with us. You can talk to us about any question that you have. Okay. So yes. if, if I wanted to do ice cream in Italian ice, so like store, because I currently do ice cream, but I get it from a distributor. So I have dipping cabinets already. Um, so would I, if I wanted to do Italian ice in ice cream, would I need a separate freezer because of the temperature it needs to be? Uh, yes. The question was, do I need a separate dipping cabinet for the Italian ice? I tell people that if you go into an ice cream parlor and you see ice cream in the same cabinet with Italian ice, run like hell, because that means both products are loaded with chemicals. Uh, sugar, water, and flavor should be uh, stored at 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Ice cream we scoop at about 6 degrees Fahrenheit. So the two are not going to go well together. You can put dairy-free vegan in with ice cream uh, or ices, and, and they will work. Uh, but you need a separate cabinet. Um, I don't know where my ink bird is. Do you? It should be in here. Okay, we're gonna see if we can find something to show you a way to save you money. Ah. Good. Thank you. You can put that back up. Normally, you have to go out and buy two separate cabinets, One, and they're about. Uh, they start about two thousand and go up. Uh, Jeff has been famous. Uh, for using freezer chests, which I don't agree with completely, but they do have some merit. But if you're trying to get into business and you have no money, and you're looking at a, a $3,000 uh, dipping cabinet versus a $900 chest freezer, this is your solution. I can't sell this because it doesn't have NSF and UL approval, uh, but it's a great device. It's called Ink Bird. Two unrelated words. Ink, like in a pen, and bird, like the thing that flies. So Inkbird, this is at Amazon, it's $32. They have different variations of it uh, that cost more, you don't need, it's with the one case where you don't need to spend $40, you'll just be buying more complicated. And the principle is just so simple. If you've ever put up Christmas lights uh, at, at Christmas time on your front porch, you put up the lights around the front entry and then you plug the, the, the lights into a timer and the timer goes into the wall. And the timer turns on the lights at dusk and turns them off whenever you set it, two in the morning. Still good on time? Yeah, I was just tasting it. Okay. I swear, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> so you're setting the time that the lights go on and off. What this is doing, instead of you buying a 16 degree dipping cabinet and a six degree dipping cabinet, this is just taking a chest freezer that naturally goes to 10 below zero. By plugging your Christmas lights into here, the dipping cabinet, and then plugging this into the wall, it's got a little bulb <coughs> thermostat. We drop that into the cabinet. We set this for ices. We set it, it doesn't say ices. It says six, I punch it to 16 degrees. Now, the cabinet's at 80 degrees, room temperature. This device is plugged in and running. The box is going to cool down, heading for 10 below. When it hits 16, it shuts off the electricity. That's all it does. It turns off the electricity. I can't go any colder. There's no electricity. And then when it warms up to 17, it turns the electricity back on. So for $32, you've got a perfect uh, dipping cabinet for either ice cream or ices. It's really ingenious. You just saved a lot of money so you can put it towards your second Emory Thompson batch freezer because now you're working on your third million dollars. Um, so it's, it's not made in the United States. It, uh, I don't even recognize the certifications on this, but uh, quite frankly, your Christmas lights aren't made in the United States either. Lots of things aren't. It's called Inkbird? 
Ink Bird, two words, Ink Bird, you can get it at Amazon. Uh, don't buy the one that's $40 because it's for beer and it's got all sorts of different controls. This is so simple, even I can run it. And, and that's a hallmark of my machines. They're so simple because I want to be able to run it too. Um, so that's what you can do. And that gets you into the ISIS business instantly. Now, how long does Italian ice last? Italian ice will last uh, the way I make it, using sugar, water, and fresh orange juice like Christy just did. Uh, in At 16 degrees, it'll last for three or four days. Then the flavor starts to bleed to the bottom of the can. You have a choice of either using chemicals, which will hold it in suspension, and it'll last for a week or two, uh, but I would rather you be dependent on the weather. You wake up at six in the morning, you get your coffee, and you turn on the weather channel. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful for the next three days. Great, I'm gonna take a lot of lemon ice out of my freezer cabinet and put it into my serving cabinet because I know I'm gonna go through it. Oh no, there's a hurricane coming. Well, I'm not gonna sell any ice at all. So I'm gonna leave it in the colder freezer. At the colder freezer, it'll stay uh, rock solid and I could keep it for months. But if you call up and say, I've had bubblegum licorice Italian ice in my uh, freezer cabinet for four months now, is it any good? My answer is gonna be yes. Bubblegum licorice ice cream at 10 below is as good as the day you made it. But it's been sitting in there for four months. It's a lousy flavor. Get rid of it. Don't start making stuff just because you like it. Okay, so we're gonna turn off the refrigeration. I like to wait until you hear that kick off, kind of like a Jeff thing. <laughs> and here we go. Now look how fast that comes out. That's beautiful. I think this is gonna be you guys' favorite. So you notice how when we made ice cream in this, it filled up two of these, but because half of this was orange juice, you're not getting as much as your yield back out, which is very normal. Don't forget, this has alcohol in it, so mm -hmm. if you don't want alcohol at 11.15 in the morning. You're in Florida. <laughs> and on vacation. Yeah, the, the beach, that's how I see it, you know. Oh, so close. All right. But you feel like you're staring. If you're in New York, you're going to eat this product with this, a squeeze cup, otherwise known as a pleated water cup, a lady's dress mm -hmm. pleated. It's a pleated water cup. It's a water cup. You put the ice in here, and then you squeeze it up from the bottom and eat it, and you don't need a spoon. It doesn't cost you anything, and everybody, children of all ages, love to eat it that way. That's how we do it. So, but uh, if you're in California, you're going to have to do a, 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 a cup and a spoon because they don't know what a squeeze cup is. But these, I mean, you can buy like a 1,000 of them for $20. They're so cheap. Pleated water cup made by Solo. And that's it, just put the ice in. It's a three and a half ounce cup, so if you crown it over, it's exactly four ounces. And we're gonna get anywhere from uh, $2 to three and a quarter for that. And it costs us uh, four ounces, that costs us nine cents to make. What a profit margin, it's unbelievable. So just put it in and squeeze it up and eat it. Jeff, did you want one? Sure. Um. All right, who spilled cherry on the floor? Me. Jeff. It's getting sticky. Mm -hmm. Got to feed the production team first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's important. Thanks. 
Chris, this is the best thing you ever made. <laughs> I think her daughter would argue with that. <laughs> so, how's that one? Well, Jeff said it's the best you've ever made, so I guess it's good. <laughs> Jeff eats my product and goes, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshing. It's very That's good. That's the idea, really is refreshing. Really Would you add Imagine. anything to it? Oh, sorry. No. That's no. no. like perfect. Imagine being on a beach selling this. Oh, the price you could get for it. It would be perfect enough. Mm. And I've done it before, so I know for a fact it works. Uh, packing them in here and taking it to the beach with you, it'll hold amazingly. All right, well, uh, I think it's time for a q and A. I'll move the chairs over there for you too. And where'd you get those styrofoams? Gelatosupply.com. Do you have them here? No, just this one. Um, I'm a bit older, so Christy talks about taking this to the beach and how it holds up so well. I take it to those doctors, those specialists who tell you that you're gonna wait for three hours, bring war and peace. And uh, I walk in, I carry this, uh, or ice cream or anything like that and I let the receptionist know that I'm here and I've uh, brought this uh, boozy uh, uh, Italian ice with me and the receptionist goes, oh great, I'll take that and give it to the doctor. I go, no, uh, I'll give it to him and oh look, it's melting. And three hours, hell, I'm in next. I'm right in line next. <laughs> so keep it in mind, it's a good trick. Walk Tell in with you ice didn't cream. get in. Tell them what happened when you didn't. I, I lost an eye a few years ago, and I'm going to this fancy, fancy doctor at Columbia Presbyterian in New York. And the first time I bought ice, and she took it away, and I got in within an hour. The second time I held on to it, and I got in with 10 minutes. The third time I waited three and a half hours. To, he, he's the Queen's uh, a doctor from England. And uh, I waited three and a half hours. And by this time, we're on a first name basis. I go, hey, Jeff. What gifts? I've been sitting out in your waiting room for three and a half hours. He goes, oh, the lady before you brought uh, chocolate chip cookies. I wasn't hungry. She. <laughs> <laughs> so make the appointment early. <laughs> make it ahead of everybody else. And, and don't bring war and peace. You'll be, you'll be just fine. So normally we sit here because we're tired and we want to sit down for a minute. And we, we couch it as uh, uh, questions. So we hope you have some questions. I don't to ask know. They've been questioned out, I think. Do you think so? Um, I'm going to tell you about one product, um, allulose, and uh, there's a, uh, I make I make a sugar-free uh, Italian ice uh, because I'm a diabetic, and so I'm not supposed to have sugar. Uh, the truth is, we all cheat. We we, we carry this little device which just lets us add more insulin into our body and, you know, we cheat. But um, a lot of people um, wanted to have a sugar-free product and it didn't exist or if it did, uh, it, you, uh, if you see anything normally on the market, it's going to say maltodextrin. Well, maltodextrin is a modified food starch, which is a fancy name for a product that gives you diarrhea if you eat too much of it. And a four ounce portion would be too much. Oh, I have that. Did you want it? Do you have this for it? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, so I, I got onto this, thank you, about uh, four years ago, five years ago. Time flies. And it's called Allulose, A L L U L O S E. And it's available uh, in your supermarket. They hide it all the way down. If you go to the sugar section of the, of the aisle, and you've got the cane sugar and, and Splenda and all that stuff. This stuff's hidden way down on the floor because nobody wants it. Nobody knows what it is. Uh, but it's, it's all natural. It's uh, a combination of rare fruits. And uh, it's fantastic stuff. The uh, first time I made, I made lemon ice. And uh, with just uh, water, lemon juice, and cellulose. Um, and I have five of these formulas at my website, or at, uh, on my personal computer. So all you have to do is email me, say, can I have the sugar-free formulas to steve at emerythompson.com, and I'll send them to you. Uh, so the first time I make it, uh, uh, it was delicious. So I had one portion of lemon ice, I had a second portion, I had a third portion, and by that time, I, I was full, so I, didn't, I skipped lunch. 
Uh, so about one in the afternoon, I'm laid out on the, on the floor of my office with low blood sugar. It just makes you feel really dizzy and, you know, like out of the world. And everybody in the office knows that. And they just step over me. And uh, they said that uh, they, they leaned over and said, are you OK, Steve? And I was just saying something about waving my arm and going, proof of concept, <laughs> meaning that uh, I was full from eating it. And the stuff worked so well that it didn't raise my blood sugar. So this has been going on for a number of years that we've been using this. And people are very happy because now they can make a sugar-free sorbet, sugar-free Italian ice. Christy comes in with this uh, last week. And it's a new product on the market called Swerve. S-W-E-R-V-E. And uh, it says it's a delicious sweetener that is... Uh, and it's, it's gonna, it has no sugar alcohols. Uh, so it's doing the exact same thing as my product that I, I found. And then we look at the ingredients. The ingredients in my product is allulose. And the ingredients in Swerve is allulose. And that's all that's in there. This is allulose. This is the same as this, except now that it's new on the market and it's got this pretty fancy packaging, they charge more for it and give you less of it. Uh, this is usually sold in two pound bags, and this is not even a pound. Twelve ounces. And I paid eight fifty nine for that. That's robbery. Yeah. So either way, I mean, if you want to have this in your coffee, it'll work great. Uh, but if you want to make Italian ice with this uh, uh, or dairy free, uh, it, it works perfectly well, and um, your customers will be really happy. And unlike the maltodextrin, it doesn't give you diarrhea. So that's a plus. <laughs> What about bad gas? <laughs> just kidding. Everything gives oh, yeah, me those. bad gas. <laughs> yes. Do we have to go there? I'm just asking. Yes. So you're referring to that with making the Italian ice. What about sugar-free ice cream? Take it away. So dairy mix naturally contains sugar. So there's really no such thing as sugar-free ice cream. You can do a no-sugar-added ice cream. Uh, so you can buy... Um, no sugar added chocolate chips, you can buy sugar free cookies, you can buy sugar free brownies, things like that to add into it. Um, unless you want to make your own mix, which is dairy free, which would consist of coconut milk and all oat milk or this and water and whatnot. But to just use what we were using to make a sugar free ice cream, not possible um, because there is naturally sugar. And that's in milk in general. So you buy milk off of the shelf, it has sugar in it. Well, that's the dairy mix people. What is the sugar in, in milk? Is it lactic lactic sugar that the cows produce? It's a sugar. Yeah. We know that. In, in the milk, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. So you can never have sugar-free ice cream yeah. because yeah. Uh, the cows are producing it. It, yeah. it has milk naturally has sugar in it. Um, but you can make a dairy-free. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's two companies uh, that are very great, and that's Mommy's Gelato and Meadowvale. Both of those are in your packets as well. So Mommy's Gelato comes in a powder form that you need to mix with water and let it bloom. It has a little bit of slightly of the, the grainier texture to it. Now they have four different kinds. They have an oat-based, an almond base, a, um, a coconut-based, and now they just came out with a matcha one. The oat Rages, which is the oat-based one, I like to use that for flavors that you're trying to make dairy-free, like their normal ice creams, cookies and cream or coffee or things like that, because it has no background taste to it. If you work with coconuts, obviously you're going to have that coconut flavor to it. Uh, Meadow Vales has a dairy-free, and it comes in a bladder, just like what we were using, but it's tapioca-based and it only has the flavor of the coconut. So whatever flavor you do make with that, you have to make sure it does complement coconut. Um, but if you're wanting to just do any other type of flavor, then Mommy's Gelato is where you really need to have them in, in hand. The, the Mommy's uh, oat is really smooth and creamy. It's very smooth and creamy. And um, we have at our uh, website, emerythompson.com, we're almost up to 600 YouTube videos. We cover every formula you can ever think of or any question that you ever have. It's all there. It's all for free. You can just have our formulas. Um, with the, when I started making the, um, uh, dare, uh, the um, vegan, um, we found out that uh, since uh, it doesn't have any taste, uh, the oat, you have to change the formula. Milk has taste. Uh, water doesn't. So all you do with my uh, formulas uh, that are ice cream and you want to turn them into a dairy-free is you double the amount of flavor. If it calls for uh, one bag of chocolate chip cookies, you put in two bags. It's, it's that simple. 
Another point on uh, Meadowvale's dairy-free bladder that they do have is they are gluten-free certified and they just became vegan certified. Uh, so that I don't know, you know, for whoever's listening out there, that's a huge, huge deal um, for that as well. And then also they have a 16% butter fat that is a clean label. Uh, so that means all natural ingredients, nothing that you cannot pronounce. Uh, so I know a lot of customers have wanted to look for something that's a clean label. That information is in your packet as well. And, uh, and for those listening, if you want that data sheet, feel free to email me and I'll email that over to you as well and get you in contact with um, Meadowvale for that clean label. Um, go. Meadowvale is a um, uh, Chicago or Illinois-based uh, dairy, uh, just like we use dairy mix here in Florida. Uh, if you're in St. Louis... Uh, or uh, Provo, Utah, uh, you can contact Meadowvale and they're going to have the product for you. They cover a number of uh, Midwest mm -hmm. states. Well, they go pretty far. They have a lot of distributors. Mm -hmm. So, um, any other particular? Jeff? You're I'm, awfully quiet. I'm trying to take a nap here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody have any particular questions? Well, I'll let you two talk because you got you to gotta talk. I got to set up lunch. Okay. <laughs> Well, you, you need to come up with the questions because what happens, Jeff and I know this, is we've been doing it for a long time together, is the second we break for lunch, we get <laughs> bum-rushed by all the people. Hey, let me just ask you this quick question. Well, other people want to hear your question too, so you know, don't hesitate to ask. Dairy-free, uh, gelato. Uh, gelato is interesting, and you're not going to hear this from anyone else, but I study the markets you know all day long uh, gelato was very big in the uh, 90s everybody was going to italy and they were having the gelato and they were coming back and saying oh isn't this wonderful isn't it great well there's a couple of problems with gelato and gelato and there's exceptions with for everything so don't call, don't call me up and tell me about il laboratorio in, in uh, manhattan because i know about it uh, you can find a gelateria in any major city uh, in the united states but I can show you 100 uh, hard ice cream businesses in any major city in the United States. There's way more of us than them. Uh, Europe will always be gelato, but around the world, uh, New Zealand and Australia are, uh, have left gelato just like America did and have gone to American uh, ice cream. They, we love our uh, sticky, gooey, sugary ice creams. It's a, it's a treat for us. Uh, nobody eats it every night except me. Uh, so uh, it is a, a real treat. Um, South America, uh, a lot of people from Germany uh, moved there, and so it's still European and, and gelato. Africa uh, is uh, American ice cream. Uh, the European countries are gelato. The Arab states uh, have gone back to American ice cream. So the majority of people, if you're going to go into business, don't necessarily be selling what you want, but sell what the public wants. And, my, and we make better gelato than anybody because we've got the infinite overrun control and we're using fresh dairy product. They're using powder like I described this morning. Um, but the main thing is uh, we're, we're going to make, I'm going to make an Italian ice this afternoon that we're calling Fruta di Bosco. And we're calling it Fruta di Bosco because it's a gelato name. It just means mixed berries. Uh, but their flavors are going to be fruit de Bosco, pistachio, vegion, vanilla, um, tiramisu. And my contention is your average uh, five-year-old coming into the ice cream parlor with her daughter, uh, the mother and daughter, the daughter is not pulling on mom's dress saying, Mommy, can I please have a tiramisu? She's asking for uh, a salted caramel or a mint chip or a Superman. Uh, and children still drive where people want to go. So if you want to do gelato, that's fine, but it's not a big market. It is a fad that came and go. This dairy-free that I'm talking about, to me, is a trend. I, I've been watching it ever since its inception, and I see the market growing over and over. I once made the comment um, that no ice cream parlor is just going to be dairy-free. They're always going to be equal dairy-free. They're going to be mostly ice cream and some dairy-free. Well. I've just said that right now, and yesterday afternoon we got an order from uh, a place over in St. Pete that is all dairy-free. You know, so they are cropping up, but that is an interesting trend, and I think it always will complement ice cream uh, because uh, now you've got something for everybody in the family. People who have a child who can't take dairy, they tell me, you don't understand what it's like. 
you know, the four of us go out for ice cream and our, our five-year-old can't have any because you don't have anything dairy-free. So it's, it's a significant market to watch. Uh, the gelato is not really significant. So with the, just to follow up on my previous question when we're talking about um, sugar-free, then really the truly only way to get sugar-free is to do dairy-free with no sugar. That's right. right. Because yep. milk is going to have sugar in it regardless. That's right. So it really would be a dairy-free, sugar-free. That's right. Okay. That's absolutely right. Thank you. Um, and, and if you talk to someone who's interested in, in uh, dairy-free and you say, well, we've got cherry Italian ice, it, it doesn't fly. Uh, Italian ice is Italian ice. It's a whole different market. They do not, it, yes, it does not have dairy in it if it's Italian ice, but it's not what they mean by dairy-free. And uh, the two biggest age groups that ever came along are the baby boomers, me, and now this next generation. Uh, is larger than us. There's uh, mm -hmm. 72 million of us left and there's 85 million of them and growing. So you got to look at your numbers and say, where am I best likely uh, to make the most money? Are we ready for lunch? I just sat down. Yes. <laughs> I just sat down. <laughs> I do have another question. It's yes. about the machines. I don't know if you're going to talk about that later and I can save my question or no, ask go right ahead. So with the different machines, what when you look at the different sizes from the smallest to the largest, what are, are kind of your recommendations for the size? So the smaller one you would recommend for what or for what type of um, customer? I'm first asking, when, when people call up here, it's usually a 20 to 40 minute conversation with me unless they don't want to. And I'm spending, out of the 20 minutes, I'm spending 17 minutes uh, trying to find out what they want to buy, what they want, not so much what machine, but what do they want to make? What do they want to sell? And then where do they want to be in a year or two? Where do they want to be in five years? Do you, are you thinking over uh, your life in the business to have one store, two stores, 10 stores? Do you want a franchise? So I'm looking at all that uh, when I'm picking the machine. So if you call up and tell me you're a high-end restaurant and you want to add dessert, uh, to your menu, I know desserts don't sell very well in high-end restaurants because you're too full from the, all the different courses of the meal. So I'm going to put you into the 200, which makes three quarts as the least expensive machine. Uh, if you are uh, 28 years old and you're just starting a business and you don't have much of a credit rating because nobody told you when you were 18 to go out and get your own credit card <laughs> to build up a credit rating, so you can buy a car on your own, you can buy, start a business on your own. Um, they don't have the money to get started. So where I used to do, and I mentioned this earlier today, where I used to do $125,000 stores, now I'm doing $40,000, $50,000 stores, much smaller. So I'm going to put you in the CB350. If you just say, I don't have any money at all, but I can't keep at my current level, uh, I'm going to tell you to go out and buy Italian ice in a push cart and spend this summer t uh, selling Italian ice and make Italian ice. I'm not worried about selling a machine. I'll, I, I sell lots of them. Uh, but then next winter, when you see how profitable that was, come back and buy a CB350. And I even take it further and I say, the CB350 makes, needs a special size wire. It's called number 10. Uh, the next size up needs a heavier wire, number 8. So I tell them, I know you don't have the money for a 24 quart, but let's run the heavier wire in the walls now while they're open. 75 bucks extra. And they will get to the larger machine. So it's going to be based on labor. Is it just two of them and they're going to be making all the product? Uh, and it's going to be heavily based on what do you have to spend? Because I know you're going to need the 24 quart eventually. And some people would say, uh, Steve, you're wasting their time. You know they're going to buy a 24 quart. Yeah, well, I know I'm going to buy a, a big ass SUV to carry around my two dogs, but right now all I can afford is a coupe. Uh, so it's going to be based on a lot on uh, cost and where I think you'll be. I'm, I'm looking at you with the way I look at my business. Where am I in three months from now? Where am I a year from now? Where am I five years from now? And I'm looking at the five years and saying I can't afford that, but in three years I'm going to have to have this. And that's how I'm going to pick your machine. The CB350 behind me is the largest selling machine in the world. And, and it's great. And you can't find any used 
because you can't find any Emory Thompsons used anywhere. They're too, they're too valuable. The resale is almost the same as what you paid for. So Do I need to come sit back down? Excuse me? Do I need to come sit back you down? You come sit down. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we're ready to have lunch. I'm kidding you. Sit down, sit down, relax. <laughs> Do you have anything to add to that? Jeff doesn't agree with me. Jeff says go buy the biggest machine you can afford because you're going to need it. And he's not wrong, but you can't afford it. I partial. You'll always find me in the middle of both of them. Um, if you can, if you have the means to get the larger machine, uh, definitely do so. If you can't uh, and the CB350 is what you can afford, go for that as well. You don't want to start your business, you know, maxing out all of your credit cards just to purchase a larger machine, which we don't take credit cards, but you don't want to do that cash out or whatever thing credit cards can do. Um, you know, CB350 could definitely get you started. It got Jeff started. It's gotten many, many, many hundreds of our customers started into the industry. Um, you know, some people even purchase it to do some R&D because this is what they're going to be doing in the next five, 10 years. Uh, some upgrade to a 24 quart and even keep the little, little guy because they start doing like alcohol infused ice creams or specialty ice cream cakes or ice cream pies or, or a little prepackaged or wholesale. Um, maybe save it for your, your nuts uh, so that way you have, you can say my machine is completely nut free and I'm using this one for all nut based products, things like that. So another question, so the smaller machine the runtime is the same as the middle and then the bigger one, right? They they make the ice cream like the same the same amount of time. Amount of time. The two hundred is slightly slower. For vanilla, it's ten minutes, and then up from there, all the machines are eight minutes. So it's a little bit slower, but two minutes you you can't even notice it on a clock. And you can't change your overrun either on that one. So you'll notice it doesn't have a touch screen on it. So it's one set speed and one speed only. So whatever ice cream you make, it's going to be the same texture and consistency every single time you make it. Um, I personally have that one in my kitchen at home. And I do it to see what flavors work well, like boozy creamsicle ice, uh, coffee gelato, things like that. Um, so it's great for that and it's it's a good start for even those that are doing push carts and pizzerias you know so even starting with the CB200 that's okay too so that, that's it so one setting so you can make ice cream gelato in the you can but you can't one. make like custard and it's not theoretically a gelato because you can't lower the speed of it to make it a very very low overrun um, it's, it's super only, premium. Yeah, it's more of a super premium type of ice cream. You're not going to get a whole lot back out. Just three quarts, that's it. Because it's such a very small cylinder, you don't have a whole lot of room for expansion anyways. Um, so I typically do a quart and a half, two quarts of mix, and I'm going to get about three quarts, three and a half quarts back out. So you really don't get a whole, whole mess out of it. I don't have a machine at home. What's up? <laughs> I have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> You have anything? What do you say, Jeff? I don't have a machine at home either. Oh, okay. Then I don't feel so bad. Is that it? You guys ready to eat? The, the, the smallest machine is air cooled only. It doesn't run with any. Yes. The 200 and the 350 are air cooled only. There's no necessity for them to be water cooled because they're countertop models. Uh, you do need to have about a foot and a half of airspace all around the machine so it can breathe properly. Uh, and it does get produce a little heat, but not enough to worry about. When you hit the floor models, that's what Steve was talking about way earlier today, was you want to go with water-cooled. Water-cooled machines you can shove into a corner, a hole, a basement, things like that, and it's not going to produce any heat. And a larger model on the air-cooled, you'll have to keep it pretty far away from the walls. You'll ha it's gonna make your room pretty stuffy and hot and uncomfortable. The machine won't break, it won't, you won't ruin anything, but the hotter the machine gets, the longer it's gonna take to freeze. Not drastically, but you're looking maybe 30 seconds longer, a minute longer than what you're used to because it's getting a little too hot and stuffy. But typically people with air-cooled machines are in super strict cities like San Francisco or Alaska, uh, remote islands, um, some places way up a mountain where water is very hard to get to, things like that. But typically water-cooled is your best option for the larger models. One, uh, one, another, one other way to look at it is um, water is, uh, everybody says, oh, we want to conserve water. But you know what? Water doesn't disappear. If you use it to brush your teeth, it goes down the drain and then it's not gone forever. It goes into the ground and then it comes back out again as uh, evaporation and it rains somewhere. Uh, maybe not over your house, 
Well, because it was your water. I don't want your it goes somewhere. teeth water all Well, it's, pure, it's clean. <laughs> um, but, um, and the water bill <laughs> is, uh, uh, you're not, it very uses very little water. It's only using water when you turn on that button and uh, use refrigeration. So for eight minutes, it's using a minimal amount of water. Um, your water bill, everybody looks at it and says, oh, it's expensive because it comes in as a separate bill. You get a $1,000 electric bill in the summertime and you go, eh, what do you expect? We're an ice cream parlor. We're running air conditioning. We're running dipping cabinets. But the water bill stands out. So everybody, so water gets a bad rap. But in every city I've ever known, the water bill prices are set by the government. The, the city of Brooksville, the village of Pelham, uh, the city of Miami. They're the ones setting the price. They want to get reelected, so they don't want to raise that water bill. The electricity, we've all seen this year in the last three years, the electric bill going up skyrocketing quickly. Mm -hmm. It's going up three or four times a year. And every time that electric bill goes up, so does the cost of operating any machinery, dipping cabinet, hardening cabinet, whatever, because uh, you're paying for air conditioning to take the heat out of the store. You can't run an ice cream parlor in a 100 degree temperature because your customers are gonna go somewhere else. So water cooled is actually the least expensive way to go. As far as efficiency, um, we have uh, upped the compressors over the last couple of years uh, to be stronger so that water-cooled and air-cooled, they have the same uh, production rate. Uh, there's no difference in them. So either one you choose is just fine. But I always tell people, wherever you can, buy water-cooled, mm -hmm. no matter what it is in the store. Yeah, if you ask a bakery, they'll tell you how hot it gets because they have no choice. There's no water-cooled ovens. And bakeries get very, very hot. They wish they could have water-cooled. Yeah. Very true. Let's eat. Okay. Well, wait, wait, we have one more. Just one more, one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. So with the 12 cord, it says single phase or three phase. What are the phases? To do? Well, like first, you know, the that's not really my area as far as phases, but single phase and three phase. Single phase is a lot of people try to call an order a three phase because that's what other machinery are is three phase. Well, single phase and three phase, the three phase saves a little bit more electricity than the single phase. Is it a big difference? No, kind of like an energy saver light bulb. I've never noticed a difference in my electric bill and I've swapped every damn light bulb in my house for the energy saver ones and it's never made a difference. Uh, some people have to do a three phase. I think Steve can touch more base on that and then also Mike, our technician. Every building in North America, including uh, Mexico and Canada, has single phase in their in their building this building uh, your home your home your apartment your condo they're mm -hmm. all what we call single phase power it's two lines of electricity in three phase uh, this factory is three phase because we use a lot of energy it's three wires of electricity so the three wire can carry it won't save you money but the three wire can carry more electricity over the same transmission line. So that's why I have three phase in this building. Um, but the big thing is, America is built on single phase power. No matter what building you go rent, there will be single phase power. It's gonna be very rare for you to find three phase power. Over in Europe, it's just the opposite. Everything is three phase power, and there's no, almost no, not a lot of single phase. So the European machines, the Capajanis, the Catabrigas, the Electrofreeze, these are built in three-phase power. And uh, you have to buy a converter to run it uh, if you don't have three-phase in your building. It used to be about $7,000 that if your house didn't have three-phase power, if you could get it, it would be $7,000 to bring three-phase in. Now it's $110,000 because we're not building electric plants. So three-phase is just off the table, and, and uh, you can't move a three-phase machine. You start off in a 900-square-foot store and a three-phase machine because there was three-phase in the building, and you go to a 1,500 store that there's no three-phase anywhere, you just bought a brick. Your, your machine is a brick. Uh, the Italians will say, oh yeah, you buy our machine for 33% more than Emory Thompson, and then you also buy a, a $2,000 phase converter. Well, you don't need phase converters with our machines. So the general rule of thumb in North America is just stay away from three phase. It's not gonna save you anything. It's gonna cause you just headaches. You'll see, if you do find a used Emory Thompson on eBay, make sure it says one phase, not three phase, because you, you, you're not gonna have three phase in that building. 
Now we should break for lunch. Okay. Right. <laughs> you getting full of ice cream yet? Oh, yeah. Nope. No. No. <laughs> That'll never happen. The dairy mix people are. <laughs> Rolling. Okay. Rolling. Okay, we're going to make pistachio ice cream. <clears throat> I put the mix in the machine, and I've ground up a bag of wonderful pistachios. Not totally ground up. There's pieces and pieces and pieces. And then we'll pour them in. Start the machine up. And we'll add the wonderful pistachios. Do you need extra salt with that when you make it? What? Do you need extra salt with that when you make it? No? No. Okay, the wonderful pistachios are in there. And now, uh, <laughs> Monin pistachio. Monin. Is that an alcohol or a flavor? No. It's, it's a competitor of Tarani. Okay. But I like the Monin better than the Tarani. Uh-huh. Who asked that? Well, you'll be the judge of that, won't you? <laughs> uh, it's Monin. They make all the flavors that Tarani does, but uh, I like the uh, I like the Monin um, pistachio, and I like the Monin cookie butter. Uh, that's it. <laughs> wow. Now what do we do? I love it. Taste, taste it. Yeah. I'll taste it for you. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> All right, we'll see how this tastes. <laughs> okay, we're ready to roll. Could there be anything simpler? And when you taste it, well, I hope you like it. It will be good. <laughs> No, no. In my world, when you make ice cream, the less the better. When I make uh, Oreo crunch ice cream, I just load it with Oreos. And that's it. Because that's the taste we grew up with. Same with M&Ms and Snickers, all those candy bars. Just leave it. Just add in a ton of them. More than anyone else. And most of my ingredient, most of my recipes, I gave in the class. I give out a hundred recipes, and I would say in at least ninety of them, there are three ingredients or less, because that's a better ice cream. Yeah. Simple, simple. And it's also easier for you to adapt it. If you want more nuts, add more nuts. If you want less nuts, add less nuts. What was your question? When you're turning on the machine and you press the start button, um, and then you press the compressor, so you do that as soon as you, after you taste it and you're ready to go. You don't do that until you taste it Correct. and you're ready to go. Just a habit. Uh, he doesn't do that. Uh, but it's, well. <laughs> he meaning Steve Thompson. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's a habit. And, and I can't tell you in 14 years how many times I taste it, I go, well, wait a minute. And I forgot something. And rather than throw out the batch of ice cream, uh, I just, I always taste it. Now, Steve has a logical response to that. And his response is that when you put the compressor on, you've still got two, three, four minutes before things start happening in the cylinder. So you have plenty of time to add. I just don't, that's how I do it. Just to follow up to your comment, you said you don't have to throw it out. So at what point, like for example, you make something, at what point if you, you throw forgot it out? an ingredient? Yes. I'll give you one word. Slambuca. <laughs> I made Slambuca ice cream. I love Sambuca. And I figured everyone's going to love this. Nobody loved this. It went out maybe a day later. And anytime you make an ice cream, 
We did it in class. If something's not great, don't forget, well, when you leave my class, you're making the world's best ice cream. So when you taste it, if it's not the world's best ice cream, throw it away. Even if you followed the recipe and everything is as you planned it, if it's not the world's best cherry vanilla, the world's best Bailey's, the world's best chocolate, if it's not the best, throw it away. So at any time, then you can add ingredients is what we're saying. Well, uh, you mean in the machine? Yes. No. No. You can only add ingredients. If your ice cream is going to take 12 minutes, you've got four or five minutes to add stuff. Otherwise, it won't really mix okay, thoroughly. Okay, okay. I have a totally different approach to making ice cream. A hundred percent different. And mine comes from... Same as I have a hundred percent different approach when I make machines. <laughs> but you don't make me. Ah, uh, therein lies the point. But I make ice cream. No, you really don't. Mine is a completely different approach. Mine is, uh, I use an example, whether it works or not, of McDonald's. McDonald's to me is a lousy hamburger. Sorry, McDonald's, it's just my opinion. So is Burger King and so is Arby's and the rest of you. Uh, compared to what I make at home, it's a lousy hamburger. But it's the same lousy hamburger in Detroit as it is in New Orleans, as it is in Moscow, as it is in Istanbul. When you go through those arches to get a lousy hamburger, you know exactly what you're going to get. And whether you go through uh, today or five years from now, unless they change the formula, it will always be the same lousy hamburger. They have That's consistency. The, the truth of the matter before. is people the age of who's in this room right now are going to probably have a second store, maybe a third, maybe a fourth. And uh, a couple of notes. One, uh, Swenson Ice Cream Parlors back in the 90s, we did 475 stores with them. And what killed Swenson was uh, someone on the East Coast, she was uh, a lady on radio uh, named Joan Hamburg, and she would rate businesses and tell you about businesses. And she came on one day and told the truth. She said, the ice cream in San Francisco is so much better at Swenson's than the ice cream in D.C. And forget about the Miracle Mile on Long Island. In other words, she was saying between those three stores, there was total inconsistency. And that killed, uh, um, uh, that killed Swenson's. I like to put it that um, there's a place called in Centerville, Massachusetts, which is Cape Cod, called Four Seas Ice Cream. I love their mint chip ice cream. And uh, we may only get up there every three or four years. But every time we go, number one, they better have that mint chip in stock because I expect it to be there. It's a standard flavor. And it's got to taste just the way my brain remembers it tasted four years ago. If there's a variation in it, it's going to be what's up? You know, what did you do? Did you try to cheapen the product? Is there new management? something like that, it's got to be the same. The only way you can have everything the same is that recipe, once you decide it's the way you want it, uh, and I say, if you do it mathematically, uh, if you need this much of this to work and that to work and that to work. Once you narrow it down through, I make, if I make four batches, or Christy makes four batches of a new flavor, we'll have a recipe in four batches. You write it down on a, on a three by five file card and you stick to it. Um, I get people calling up, of course I'm joking, but uh, I used to teach people how to make ice cream out in the field, and uh, I would tell the ice cream maker with the owner standing there, I would say, owner, uh, if, if this employee drops a spoon into the machine and the machine comes to a sudden halt, uh, uh, have the employee tell you, hey, I just broke the Emory Thompson, or I, I dropped a spoon in it, they didn't break it. And, and we'll call Emory Thompson and say, what do, we, what do we do about it? We'll tell you and we'll get it fixed. Because if the owner doesn't know, there might be something different in the machine and the ice cream wouldn't, even with the formula, wouldn't be consistent. I then turn to the ice cream maker and say, do you want me? You're done? Okay. When I'm done, you're done. Go for it. Okay. All right, we'll stop the, comp the compressor. Now, now there's good reason for doing that. What? There's good reason for doing that. 
There is? Yeah, otherwise, if it's still going, it's freezing to the walls. Right. And here is the world's simplest pistachio ice cream. By the way, this flavor, uh, we started it at the store maybe, oh, three months ago, four months ago, and it's the number one seller in the store. Wow. This simple product. Anybody allergic to nuts should have asked that. Nope. Okay. Would you ever use color? No. Why? To make it uh, green. No, because you don't. You shouldn't have dipping cabinets so the customer doesn't see the color. Well, they see it as they're eating it. And? It's bright and colorful. No, they feel this is more natural. Okay. That's how I feel. Our mint chocolate chip is white. Uh, well, the adult version is white uh -oh. uh, because we make it with clear cream de mint. Is this on? We, we you're, can, okay. you're doing. Okay. <laughs> There's uh, a company called Green Mountain Flavors in Oswego, Illinois. Stan Sitton is the president, and he makes all natural uh, extracts and colors. Uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to have a bright red um, ice cream, and the mother is saying, oh, no, you can't have that. That's red dye 40. And the response from the owner is, oh, no, ma'am, that's concentrated beet juice. That's the most natural thing in, in, in the world. And then she looks around and says, wow, if they care that much about that one flavor, what's the rest of this store like? Or, conversely, my <laughs> why? Why put color into something? I mean, this is most homemade ice creams we talked about in class. Most homemade ice creams are bland, the color. The moms that care about Red Dye 40 have children named Willow or, or Rain. <laughs> well, that's a different story. So why, or name cross why box. put in any color? Why add anything to the ice cream? Because it's what we expect to see out of a, a, a product like that. Especially if you're looking at gelato display cases. They're beautiful. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Thank you. So I got to try that. Oh, I'm so going to make you one. Whoops. Yes. So I'm sorry for asking all these. No, we want you. We want you to ask questions. Yes. So with the machines, I know that to make smaller batches, uh, you know, you put in less. But is there because as you are trying to perfect your recipes, is there like a minimum amount you should put in a particular machine? Yes, the CB350. You can't put in less than three and a half quarts. Okay. That's the bare minimum. When you get into the bigger machines, you can do their half their rated capacity. So this is a 24 quart. You can put in uh, 10 to 12 quarts uh, of fin uh, have finished ice cream. Uh, so you can make a half batch of everything. Instead of making two tubs on this, you can make one tub. That's what Jeff's been doing all day today. Okay. Uh, so that, that's pretty okay. easy. Okay. Did you add your cherries? No. Mm. Um, darn, what I do with it? Boy, this is good. <laughs> it's definitely strong pistachio. Um, to off play off of uh, Jeff's pistachio, I'm not trying to steal his thunder. Um, but Jello makes an instant pudding mix, uh, pistachio flavored. I use this when I make pistachio ice cream, and it makes it that beautiful green that you're used to seeing. Now it is a, a pudding mix. You don't add anything with it. You just put your dairy mix, you put the pudding powder packet right in there or in there. Um, so it's going to make it a little bit more thicker than normal and kind of be on the more pudding side. Um, Will your average consumer be able to taste the difference or the texture? No, it's just going to be very thick and very creamy. Uh, this is a no jello, a uh, jello uh, cheesecake powder, but the pistachio one, I have also done it with a dairy free because these little mixes are dairy free, believe it or not. There's no dairy that is in it. Sorry, I was saying this is great ice cream. Yeah, you're over there talking. I, actually, I was saying, I can't believe you actually made something good. <laughs> and it looks a little green from the uh, syrup, so there's your green, mm -hmm. Steve. This slight, yeah. There's a little hue of green. Good, isn't it? Okay. Yep. I'll take the rest. Go ahead and put it in the freezer and <laughs> pack it a little pint. <laughs> so, Jeff, literally it was just, it was just ninja uh, pistachios in a, in a bottle of pistachio. And you, I saw this moaning, not Toronto. 
What? In those, in those Tarani? No, no Monin. Monin on that one. Yeah. Mm. It's good. I don't. I don't think there's a simpler thing to make. <clears throat> Vanilla. It's a winner. <laughs> Not much simpler than this. No, it isn't. It really is. This is gonna sell. Oh, that's good. As soon as Christy comes back, we're going to make the fruity Tabasco. And I think you'll like that. That's going to be uh, uh, just a straight Italian ice. As I mentioned, Italian ice is just so easy. It's just sugar, water, and flavor. That's all there is to it. And so inexpensive. <laughs> I, you know, I'll, you meet some people in life and... Um, you know, they like to brag, they're driving the Porsche and all that, and they like to tell you how much money they have. And then you meet someone with Italian ice, who makes Italian ice. I say to them, how you doing? They say, we do okay. And I go, are you kidding? That much? That's amazing. You know, because so they don't funny. brag about, they're just raking in the we money. We tell a story uh, in the class. <clears throat> when I opened the store, it became wildly successful, and the ice creams were $5. No toppings, no mix, just $5, that's it. One size, no choices. And after, oh, maybe three years, uh, we, we uh, grossed a million dollars. And we would walk around the store all the time, and people every single day, you heard Rose say it yesterday, every day people would come up and they go, how do you make any money at $5 an ice cream? And all we do is smile and walk away. <laughs> and that's what you're in for. You're in for that. Because you don't understand how $5, not, forget being rich, that's not the important part. $5 will give you a future, it'll give your kids a future, you'll become known in the community. $5. Yeah. That's all it is. And. I can't begin to tell you what $5 has gotten me, but every day people walk by, because I drive a nice car or where, whatever, and they say, how do you make any money at $5? And they see four people sitting there. How do you make any money? And you just smile and walk away. And, and think about it. You know, you've got a husband, wife, and two kids, and for a $20 bill, you have an evening's entertainment. Go? You can take the kids out, put it, load everybody into the car, and go buy them uh, ice cream. And it takes a while to get there and to sit down and order and eat it. And you just have an, a nice evening out. Um, along that line, I mentioned Swenson's. One thing that Swenson used to do, you'll notice as you walk around my building, there's all these picture windows into all the offices. You can see what everybody's doing in, in my factory here. Um, right up into uh, the control room back in there. Um, I did it to copy Swenson because Earl Swenson put in a picture window into his ice cream room, called it Swenson See Us Freeze, and nobody knows how ice cream's made, so he had a much smaller room than this, maybe from here back and in like that. And the most convenient time to make ice cream, you can ask Jeff, is say 9.30 in the morning. Uh, yeah, Earl Swenson made it at 9.30 in the morning, but it, he also knew to make it at 7.30 uh, Friday night and Saturday night. Because now on Saturday night, you pile the family into the car, you can go to Swenson's, and even though he should be out front scooping ice cream, um, he's making one flavor in the machine at 7.30. So everybody circle around watching the ice cream being made, and then when he's finished, old man Swenson... Uh, takes the tub of ice cream and goes out and gives out a free spoonful to everybody out in the parking lot to try the ice cream. And then he's already made it in advance, so he has it in pints, which is what I would do today. He didn't do it back then. Pre-frozen pints, so even if you didn't want pistachio ice cream uh, that he just made, you wanted your mint chip, you could have your mint chip, chip cone, but you're gonna still add on this, oh yeah, throw in a pint of that pistachio, that was pretty good. So it's, it's great marketing to make it where and when people can see it. You almost ready there, Christy? I've been ready. Okay. I've been ready, too. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is our last flavor of the day. You were first. We work together. <laughs> Mm. 
Yeah, you can use this one. Okay. So this is a simple formula that Christie's put together. Three and a half quarts of water, uh, strawberries, mixed berries, boysenberry extract, and sugar. And that's, that's all that's in there. Fruit of Tabasco is Italian. It, it's usually a gelato. It's Italian for mixed berries. So that's, that's all it is. We picked, uh, Christy went to the supermarket, <laughs> saw what was available uh, that was, you know, available to, you know, fresh or fresh frozen, and said, let's throw these in and see what happens. And that's what a lot of ice cream is, is throw it all in and see how it goes. There you go. Thank you. So that's my water. Um, and I'm going to add the sugar to this. Again, like Christy said, you can add the sugar into the machine, but to increase the incredible longevity of the blades, most people's blades, their machines last, the blades last six months, and you have to replace them. Ours go five, six, seven years, uh, depending on the volume of the store. And we can get extended life by putting the sugar right in here. This, this is literally sandpaper. Uh, it's, it's just like sandpaper. It's very coarse and uh, can wear parts out, and we want to keep everything running forever. But once I dissolve it, it's just water. And sugar dissolves very easily in water. I mean, you run into some chefs, and they say, oh, you've got to heat the water up on the stove. To get That's a lot of bull. Uh, you're going to see when I pour this in. I mean, I've been stirring it maybe on and off for 15 seconds. It's already all dissolved. And it was two pounds of sugar. So when I pour this in, if there's a little teeny tiny stream of sugar that didn't get dissolved going into the machine, what difference does it make? Sound like Hillary Clinton. What difference does it make? It's only a little stream compared to two pounds. So it isn't going to hurt anything. Now I'm going to pour this into the machine. Oh, let me throw that. I might as well throw the extract in too so that it doesn't get stuck on the, uh, the door. And, oh, well, that smelled good. What kind of extract is it? I was going to pass it around, but go ahead. Boysenberry uh, from Weber Flavors. You want to pass it down? Uh, Weber Flavors and Green Mountain Flavors. Uh, they both are very good um, choices for flavoring. Uh, like Steve mentioned, Green Mountain Flavors is all natural. So like he said, instead of green, um, you know, red dye 40, they use beets uh, to extract to make that red color. Just about everything else that they have, it's all natural. Uh, Weber Flavors, they have been around actually longer than we have. Since 1902, we are 1905. So they've been doing this for a very long time and they are well known for even making custom flavors that you are specifically looking for. And they have the off the wall like blue moon flavors and silver unicorn, whatever that tastes like, you know, type <laughs> of flavors. <laughs> uh, so Christy was talking about this morning, you saw that instead of resting it on here, which will cause it to slosh over on the sides, I raised it up like that. And if you watch me pour that in, I didn't miss a drop. And I'm blind in one eye, so if I can do this, imagine what you can do. But it just, just like that, it goes in very easily. And that's my sugar and water and my extract. And now what's left but the, uh, the berries. So to get them to go down easily, I'm going to go to this make ice cream. I'm going to look for Italian ice. Um, I've got homemade dairy-free custard super premium gelato frozen yogurt. So I'm going to page two, which is sorbet, sorbetto, cream ice, manual speed, sor sherbet, frozen lemonade. And there it is, Italian ice. We hit Italian ice and start and just pour in the berries. It's kind of hard to see, but um if you, everybody's had frozen veg, or vegetables, frozen fruit that they've thawed and it's got that nice juice in here, that is the best. I always prefer buying frozen fruits and letting them thaw because it makes that beautiful sweet juice of its own. Uh, there you go. And you don't need syrups or ac extracts or anything like that. If you wanted, you could also open up the frozen bag of berries, sprinkle some more sugar in it, close it up and let it thaw like that, and it'll be a thicker type of syrup that's going into there. Into there. It's a natural sweet syrup juice, and it's amazing. Okay, and I'm done, and it's already been freezing for 40 seconds. Uh, if you've got a, as I was saying before, if you have a repertoire of flavors that you're going to make year in and year out over and over and over again, you don't have to taste it. I'm not sure what Jeff's seeing, but when I'm seeing Jeff do that, putting in flavors and ingredients, 
a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And let's put a little bit more of that in. How is his flavors consistent from day to day to year to year if he's doing that? I think what he's really doing is do a little bit of showmanship and he's got the formula down, or at least in his head, of he knows exactly what's going to go in. I hope so, because otherwise, if it's always a little of this and a little of that, you'll never have the same ice cream twice. And that is really bad for business. It's back to my McDonald's theory. Good or bad, it's got to be consistent. Yes? So the smaller machine doesn't have the, um, the panel on it to make the to select the different things, but I know that it makes different things, so it just depends on the ingredients the that you put in. The smallest one makes super premium ice cream, like a haagen -Dazs. It'll make gelato, and it'll do Italian ice. Right. Uh, it will not make homemade, and it won't make frozen custard. Right. So uh, it'll do dairy-free also, so it's basically doing, it's not running as fast as this is on full speed, um, but it's, it's running at the speed that uh, we picked. To, to hit that market. And so this is going to really give you a good product. The real thing you should be looking at is this is only three quarts. It's going to take you um, to make a full tub, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, 40 to 45 minutes to make one tub, uh, whereas this is going to make a tub, uh, two eight minute batches, 16 minutes. Uh, labor is your biggest problem. Because if you're just running the store yourself, uh, if it's just two of you uh, running the store, you're going to be up all day, all night with too small a machine. And I can guarantee you, you're going to outrun that in six months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have a choice. If you're doing a second store, you could put it up there. Uh, but you're going to need, you really need to start with this one. Because this is going to give you twice the production and even a little bit faster. You don't have to go here, which is going to be four times the production, but that'll come later. Um, you'll notice that you have seen Jeff and I rinse the machines in between doing that. That's not a, necessi a necessity <laughs> for every single flavor you make. If we were to start, if you were an ice cream maker in your store and you were to start with your lightest flavors first and work your way down to the dark flavors, there's no need to rinse. An example, if you're starting with vanilla, you can go vanilla straight to chocolate. If you're doing chocolate, you can do chocolate straight to coffee. Coffee will overpower that, that chocolate flavor. If you're doing strawberry, you would do vanilla, strawberry, then chocolate, and there's no need to rinse. Uh, anything with nuts, of course, save it for the last batch of the day, because uh, you want to be sure to strip down your machine to every little nitty gritty that you can. Like you said, in the Sue Happy World, you always want to be on the safe side anyways, just because it's a good thing to do. Um, and then when you work with water-based products, it really doesn't matter what order you do it in. Um, if I went from cream ice, the one orange that we just did to this, I wouldn't have rinsed it if I was going back to back. But because it sat a little bit, you know, the machine starts to get warm, then everything starts to settle and it turns into a liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to rinse that, of course, since it sat for a little bit. Here, here's what I continue saying. Here's a little trick for you. Uh, go out and buy a spaghetti colander, one of the best things you can have for making ice cream. Because when you do rinse out the machine, uh, any cherries or blueberries or anything else that uh, did get left in the machine, instead of them going down your drain and clogging it, you're going to put the, the rinse water through the spaghetti colander and catch them. So here's, we've been making ice cream all morning and I have two half pieces of cherry and it looks like one blueberry. That's not bad uh, for all the ice cream we made. But you do that day after day after day and it's gonna clog up your drain and now you gotta call a $100 plumber. So buy the uh, $8 spaghetti colander. Yeah, um, so you said you would, like if you were just making ice cream back to back, you could go from strawberry to chocolate. So you would not think that any strawberries would get in the chocolate? Not really. Um, and that, you know, I kinda wanna talk about that. That's a good point. Well, I'll just use go ahead. this. So, as Jeff had mentioned earlier today, some people pull it thinner, some people pull it thicker. Jeff pulls it on the thinner side. When you pull it on the thinner side, you have a better chance of getting all of your inclusions out that might be left in the machine because it's, it's not thick and getting stuck in there on the blades or in the back. So pulling it on the thinner side will help eliminate those strawberries that might come into the chocolate, which is a good surprise in a chocolate ice cream anyway, right? Um, but pulling it on the thinner side too will also make even 
even out your container. So if you pull it pretty thick, you're gonna you know, smack it down, get the air pockets out, maybe push it down a little bit more like you were seeing me do with the spatula. If you pull it on the thinner side like Jeff, his pretty much was just filling it up nice and evenly, no air pockets, no none of that. Um, so no, I'm not gonna worry about it if you pull it on the thinner side like Jeff did, instead of waiting so thick. I'm going to take a quick minute and just talk about the progression of your business because that's what I'm always looking in. I know your business is going to grow. You don't think so right now. You're just thinking, how am I going to get the door open with two flavors? Uh, we know you're going to grow. We know our success rate because we give you all our information for free, hundreds of videos. Um, you're going to start probably with a CB350. Let me just take a quick minute. Okay, it just started to thicken up. I could hear it. Um, and I'm making ice cream uh, ice is so much faster because I've kept everything going and just turned it on. Anyway, your progression. Uh, I'm going to talk to you. You have no money and you want to get into business. We're going to sell you a CB350. I'm going to suggest off camera uh, there are two white chest freezers, a little bigger than this table. And uh, they sell them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Sears, uh, and they go to 10 below and they will work for now for hardening ice cream. Uh, so you're gonna make the ice cream here or the ices, you're gonna take it here and you're gonna put it in that chest freezer. You have two of them because you can't fill it up all the way. You can fill it one third of the way today, one third tomorrow, one third the next day. So we wanna make enough ices or ice cream to fill one third of the way in the first chest freezer and one third of the way the second chest freezer. That's good. Next day, you do the same thing. Third day, the same thing. That's your inventory. That's what you're gonna draw off of when that line goes from you know, six people a day to 75 people a day. You're gonna need more ices and more ice cream. You've got it as inventory in those chest freezers. <clears throat> um, then you get to a point where you call me up and say, oh my gosh, we're working the Emory Thompson 18, 20 hours a day. We need a bigger machine. And I'll say, I know where you are in your business and you don't need a bigger machine yet. I'd love to sell you one. I'd like to uh, uh, sell machinery. That's why I'm here, why I build them. But you're not ready yet. You're only running this thing, let's say, 12 hours a day. Well, how about you hire uh, someone to come in for the graveyard shift, 11 o'clock at night to six in the morning to follow your, whoops, follow it. your formulas, the one that you wrote down on the file card, uh, on that file card and just say follow this formula and I use police and fire because they all have a second job you know, we don't pay them enough and they all have firemen have uh, the 11 o'clock to 6 a.m. Uh, shift off uh, at least once a, once a, uh, once a month or uh, one week a month so that's your extra source of labor or you might have relatives who you know, I would rather be up at night uh, than to be, uh, you know, working during the day. Hire them. So instead of running it for nine hours, you could run it for 18 hours. At some point in time, that just is too many hours for you. The machine can go around the clock. And you call up and say, I need another, uh, I, I need another batch freezer, another, a bigger one. And my answer to you is, I'm sorry, but you don't need one yet. I mean, I'm sorry because I can't sell you a machine. What you need is more inventory. If my business triples, which it seems to do every couple of years, um, I don't need more employees. I, mean, I need more factories. I've got three. I need more factories if I'm, I'm gonna expand. So if you can swing the camera over, is, can you pick up, Mike, uh, the hardening <laughs> cabinet? Okay, so those chest freezers will harden ice cream overnight and you can only fill them a third of the way. Uh, this hardening cabinet is 25 below zero and uh, it will stay at 25 below zero no matter what you throw at it. You can throw you know, 30 gallons of hot soup in here and it's not gonna get any warmer than 15 below zero. So it's called a shock hardener or a, a blast freezer and it's a specialty piece of equipment. So now with the ownership of this, you can uh, multiply times four the amount of inventory you have in your store. So you don't have just those two chest freezers that you can only fill a third of the way. You can fill this all the way up today with 
uh, tubs of ice cream or pints, and eight hours later, you can then take it and move it over to your chest freezers or anywhere else you need to put it. So your normal expansion will not be a second batch freezer. It'll be an Emory Thompson hardening cabinet and made in conjunction with my frenemy, uh, Capigiani. It's made in the USA uh, and we both sell it. We're ready. Okay. So then after that, then you'll buy a bigger batch freezer. This is ready. I'm gonna turn off the refrigeration. I'm gonna wait until it clicks off because it's still freezing against the walls and I don't want the blades to uh, be scraping as I'm pulling it out. So here we go. Look how fast that comes out. Isn't that beautiful color? You didn't see me put any color in this. So real quick before I put those in cups, um, so if it were me, uh, this formula is also in my recipe book, uh, and it is red sweet wine. Red sweet wine, the berries and sugar, makes a very, very wine sorbet, and it is the most amazing thing you'll ever have. Um, you don't have to be fancy with your wine. You don't have to buy the $20 bottle, buy you the cheap $5 bottle because you're just wanting it for that wine. Uh, putting it in this fancy little glass and going to Rodeo Drive or Burns Steakhouse, they're going to call it a sorbet and charge you $12. You go to Podunk, Oklahoma, where I'm from, they're going to call it Italian ice with wine in it or a slushy, and they're going to charge you 5 So calling it a sorbet in a fancy glass you can always get more for your buck. So we got, uh, we rate the machine at six quarts finished. We actually got seven quarts out. We know that. Where's my spoon? <clears throat> but um, we like to rate them on the conservative side, and then you're really surprised at when you see what you got. Less likely to damage it. Hmm? You'll be less likely to damage it by overfilling it. You, it won't freeze. It, won't, if, it just won't freeze properly. If you put, if it's a six quart machine, and you try to put six quarts of product into it it's not going to freeze at all and you know that's a, a big thing that customers call and ask like well my machine's not freezing and i'll ask well how much are you putting in it six quarts well it needs room to expand to freeze uh, it's a six quart finished capacity and that's my complaint with my competitors is they will tell you that they're selling you a 19 quart machine let me show you what they're doing we say <clears throat> that here, 24 quarts comes out of the machine, okay? Uh, they're saying that 19, excuse me, 19 quarts comes out of their machine. The way, or no, it's a 19 quart machine, sorry. What they're doing is they're turning the cylinder on end, filling it up with water all the way to the top, and they say, oh, it holds 19 quarts. Therefore, it's a 19 quart machine. You'll never get 19 quarts out of it. You'll be lucky to get 15 quarts out of it. We take a more honest approach. We say we put in a certain amount of product in here and we're gonna get not 19 quarts, we're gonna get 24 quarts out of it. So we're giving you an honest figure of what comes out, not just some arbitrary number if you fill it up. If I filled this up with uh, water, this so-called cylinder, uh, it would be about a 26 quart machine, 26, 27 quarts. Uh, but it's not, it's a 24 quart machine. So. A little simple thing. So this is our last. Does anybody want more ices and ice cream after this? Raise your hand. Me. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, we're we're tired. We're tired. I'm an ice cream freak. That's why I have an ice cream shop. <laughs> I love ice cream. So my other question is: yes. for, Once you once you make the ice cream, what's the normal time for hardening? The normal time for hardening, again, with the chest freezer. The chest freezer for $900 from Home Depot, was designed not to harden ice cream or ices. It was designed to go to 10 below, and you bring home frozen green beans and frozen DiGiorno pizzas. The ice cream, the, the freezer doesn't have to do any work. If I take your uh, five gallons of your homemade soup recipe and take it right off the stove and put it in there, that 10 below is going right up to 50 degrees instantly because you put such warm product in there. So if we take warm ices or ice cream and put it in there, if we put too much in, the temperature's gonna go way up and everything melts and then refreezes and both, all products are ruined. Uh, people call up and say, hey, my ice is really dense with flavor down at the bottom and not much up top. 
I say, what are you using to freeze your ice? And they say, oh, we're using a chest freezer and we're just filling it all the way up. Well, it went up above 19 degrees and it all melted and, and came back down again. So in that chest freezer overnight, 10, 12 hours. In a hardening cabinet, about four to six. Uh, and it will never, uh, it'll never melt on you. But since that's so rock hard, uh, we can always move it. We can either leave it there forever or we can move it over to the chest freezer and it's like the frozen DiGiorno pizzas again. They're frozen. It's not doing any work. It could, it's just sitting there. So um, to get you into business for a low price, we use the chest freezers. To get you into production, real production, then you go into a hardening cabinet. And then we get even bigger and you're servicing seven stores. You buy You don't go with this anymore. You go with a walk-in freezer at 15 below zero where you put on your coat and walk in with the two tubs. Kendall has a little surprise for you. Pack certificates. Yay. You know, Rudy DeBosco is like a cheesecake, isn't it? Kind of? Right here, right here, thank you. No, it's just, it's just, it's just a bunch of flat, uh, berries. <laughs> and it's delicious, Christy. Good formula. Because you could add a splash of dairy with this, like I did. Instead of using water, you know, you mm -hmm. can do the very berry, or you could do water and then just a splash of cream, and call it a, a very berry cream ice or whichever. We have another diabetic in the uh, audience. You can see, he and I both know what we're doing. I've just pulled out my uh, controller for my insulin pump. I just cheated on eating that whole thing of ice. So now I'm gonna give myself some more insulin to counteract it. Medicine's great. <laughs> Any other questions? I know, yes. I know you guys kind of touch base on the uh, dairy-free, um, the two different ones. Yes. If you had your choice, my son is extremely allergic to dairy products. So that's kind of the basis of why we're opening our shop, because we are so sick of trying to take him to ice cream places. Yeah. And we're a family of five, and everybody else can have it, and he can't. And it's are you folks hearing what she's saying? That she's a family of five, and one of the children can't have dairy? Yeah. Just what I was talking about this morning. Yeah, definitely allergic. Like, will we'll die so um, it's really heartbreaking like when we go to an ice cream shop and the look on his face when people say sorry we don't have any dairy free it's I mean it really just like the other day we went to an Emory Thompson shop and they have it advertised that they have that we get there and they say sorry we don't have any so we walked out and because it's not fair for him to not you know so he had a family function and he can't even have anything in the store so um, do you have a like out of the two um, that you offer, you know, that you suggest on here, do you guys have one that you think is better than the other? Go ahead. I feel, I feel more equipped to answer this one. No offense, Steve. <laughs> um, no, they're both good in their own ways. Uh, like, I don't, I don't know if you were here or not, uh, but we talked about how Mommy's Gelato has different backgrounds. Did we talk to Yeah, so tapioca is the meadow veil and the Correct. Meadow. So if. Versus almond meal. If I'm going to use meadow veil, whatever I make, I have to have and make sure it complements coconut. There's nothing you can do. You can't get rid of the coconut background. Um, I prefer the meadow veil just because it comes in a bladder. It's so creamy and it's so smooth in its own self. And then you have the mommy's gelato, which you're going to have to have it because you want to make cookies and cream, dairy-free ice cream. You want to make, you know, like a Superman ice cream for him. Uh, and you need that and because mommy's gelato offers that oat-based one where it's an oat-based background um, there's really no taster to it at all it's whatever you make it's going to make that flavor taste just like that and it's a lot much more creamier than their coconut one which they call a froconut which is still very very good now the mommy's gelato is very shelf stable it comes in a bag did you get one yeah I got okay. it right here it comes in a bag and you can leave it on the shelf for like a year it takes no refrigeration space no freezer space no none of that the meadow veil comes in a bladder, so you'll have to use it fairly quickly because it is a tapioca base, so it's going to thicken up very, very fast within a few days. Um, so you can't use partial bladder and let it sit for a day or two like you can dairy mix and then come back to it because it's just going to be like tapioca, plop, 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 plop. <laughs> um, so you both, I would suggest both um, if you really want to do a true 
dairy free uh, ice cream store. I really would. I would well, have both. Oh, and don't get crazy. We're not going all dairy free, but we want to have good options. Like, yeah. we want to have options for both just because, again, if I don't like it for my son, I can't expect my customers yeah. to like it for their own, you know, family. But um, now, does your book offer dairy free options? There's some dairy frees in there, okay. yes. And you're welcome to go see Kendall, and you can go to the dairy free section and look. There's not a whole lot, but to be honest, the ice cream recipes, you can just swap that for. You know, dairy free. You sure. can use the same ingredients. Just use your dairy free mix and just swap it for that, and it's gotcha. still a dairy free ice cream. Okay. I didn't know that when Jeff left today, we're now going to do counterpoint counterpoint between each other. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am firmly behind the um, the mommies, which is spelled M A M I S. Mommies gelato. Uh, M A M I S in Italian is is mommy, and um, I've been uh, using this for a very, very long time, maybe four or five years, uh, of the coconut first and then the oat. I really like it for a lot of reasons. Meadowvale Meadow, vale. Meadow vale is, is a great company, um, but they're not in every state, and most of the states that they're in, you're going to have to ship it in, and there's going to be a minimum quantity. That's going to involve a lot of expense. Everything Christy said about it is correct, but there's going to be a lot of shipping expense. This is coming from one central location. It can be shipped UPS. It can sit on the shelf for a year. Uh, I don't know what the whole shelf life is. It might be a couple of years, uh, but it's, it's shelf stable and it's so easy to use. I open the bag and add water. Uh, you can't get any easier than that. So unless you are like the store I'm working with in St. Pete where they're, I think it's St. Pete where I think they're completely uh, dairy free, um, you're going to have some ice cream and some dairy free. This is simple. The oat is extremely smooth and creamy. Uh, it doesn't have, I, I, I like the oat and the coconut, but the coconut, like Christy said, you can't make vanilla on it because uh, uh, coconut and vanilla ice cream, they're competing each other for world dominance. You know, which, which flavor is going to out, you know, win the other. If you're doing chocolate, it's no big deal because chocolate is so overwhelming that it'll always be chocolate. But this having no taste uh, and extremely uh, smooth and creamy, uh, makes for a great product. And I can ship it anywhere in the country. Uh, I can just leave it up on the shelf. I don't have to worry about freezing it or refrigerating it. None of that. I've just put it back on the shelf where I found it. So I think uh, it's, it's the perfect product for me. Um, but they're, Christy's right. They're both right. If I was in Chicago and I was in the local delivery sphere of uh, the dairy, then you know it would be a different story. I would probably use theirs all the time. But I have to talk to people all over, and so does Christy, all over the country, all over the world. And so this, this has worked for me uh, yeah. very well. In Meadowvale, they're not just centrally there. They do have quite a bit of distributors all over. So they do ship massive pallets to these distributors who carry it. True, but it still has to be made in Chicago and shipped to mm -hmm. distributors. So this is uh, going to be more economical. The best dairy-free with Meadowvale? Sorry, sorry, sorry is grape nuts and golden raisins. For some reason, this is my daughter's favorite ice cream, but with normal dairy. She calls it the cereal ice cream. Uh, but you soak the golden raisins in the dairy mix, the dairy-free mix, overnight or dairy mix, let them plump up really nice and thick, and then add the grape nuts with it. I don't know if this has dairy in it or not, but. No. I don't think so. No, it's just, it's, no, nope. it's wheat. You never know, never know. <laughs> never know. Anyways, and this makes a really good dairy-free ice cream. I've made it with Meadowvale's dairy-free mix and the coconut and the grape nuts and the raisins. It's really, really good. You can so. take any of our uh, That's nearly 600 flavors at emerythompson.com and make them dairy-free. Sure. All you're doing is substituting, mm -hmm. and, and that's great. And as I mentioned before, um, if you're doing an Italian ice, uh, uh, you just double the flavor. But here, you're going to treat it just like ice cream. Whatever my recipe is or Christy's recipe in her book for uh, ice cream is what you'll use right here. And it comes out great. He keeps calling them my recipes. Me, I, I barely started making ice cream when I made that book. Predominantly, there are Steve's, but there's probably a good 20 or so that's mine in there. <laughs> I showed her what the machine was, and she's showing me what great ice cream is, <laughs> to be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. your mouthwash Italian ice. Oh. <laughs> we might as well tell them. Yeah. I wanted to make mint chip Italian ice uh, back in December, uh, October, and so I 
came up with a formula mathematically, everything was right, and then at the last minute I pulled a Jeff on myself and said, I think it needs a little more extract. This is the guy that tells people on the phone he's a solid C minus in school. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I put a little, uh, uh, maybe a lot more extract into it, and I handed it to Christy to taste it, and she was, well, I won't need mouthwash for six months. <laughs> it was so, uh, it was awful. I mean, we, I don't even think we gave it out, did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we tortured well, you, them. He tasted it from the machine in front of everybody, and he takes a bite, and he just, wow. <laughs> and yeah. then he starts talking away like, it's okay. Yeah, wow is not a good word. <laughs> well, that's it for today. That's everything we've got to show you. We'll be happy to take you around the factory. We have a... Uh, one factory up there, another one across the street. This is the one where we assemble everything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you the assembly building. So that's cool. Yeah.